Yeah, kit, we can show you. This, 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 mm, that's a, uh, you can see the size of the curb there, but we're about that's to get great. back underway. And the driver, no, we're not back. Go see, again. the drivers knew, the drivers knew that, um, that there was, a, there was a, a problem with turning it off and on with the computers. And they didn't race because they didn't want anyone to miss the action. That's Absolutely. what it was. <laughs> That's what it um, was. Harris, Harris and Whitcomb, he's a good Welsh lad, yes. right? You know, he, his, his family, his mum, Donna, he, you know, they're, they're really good friends of Alpha, and he, they knew. They knew. It was a call went out. Harrison, slow down, but, you know, you're, uh, you know, there's a bit of a problem here. We want to get all the racing in on camera. So he slowed down. There's been a problem. Hopefully, uh, and uh, we're going to go racing again very shortly with probably about three minutes plus a lap to go. In the early stages of that one, before the Battenberg flag came out, it was a good start for Brandon Truman. Uh, gained six spots from where the Thule Motorsport driver began this race. Oh, uh, no, Victor no. Hansen as well for Strawberry Racing up into the top ten. I mean, Brandon Truman, I mean, oh, now, does Uncle Tyrone continue into I this new so. generation? Uh, you hope so. I, I'm sure that Uncle Tyrone does continue in this new, the new look, the new generation. I mean, I'm the only old so-and-so left now. <laughs> I've heard a lot about Uncle Tyrone oh, from, uh, wow, uh, from, from Anthony Jordan, who does send his regards, everybody. I, 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 I tell him I don't send mine. I'm, jo I'm joking, <laughs> mate. I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, here we go. We'll make fun of Anthony Jordan later on. Here we go. It's going to be Harris Whitcomb, Lewis Goff, Harry Freeman, Josh Turbill and Charlie Lee, the top five. Here we go. Lights are still not green. Are they not? I, I was getting all anticipated again. Um, Ah, now there is now there's a medical ah, team okay. at the at the exit of the crook. The crook. So you've got oblivion, crook, fine lady, once, twice, three times, fine lady. Up to Christmas, and that was Christmas Caberdy, so I got singing. Yeah. You know, Anthony would never let me sing. <laughs> uh, then you go out of Christmas, then you go through Ashby's, no, Inkerman's, mm -hmm. then down the hill towards Ashby's. Mm-hmm which is a really horrible, horrible, horrible corner to drive. It's downhill, off camber, hard on the brakes, it tightens on the exit. I mean, it's, it's a really challenging corner, but as a driver, I... It, it's what you were saying I earlier about, about two you know, every corner having its own uh, it characteristics. Yes. You, know, you look at it from a track map, it's two hairpins at Christmas in that oh, They no, are no, no, completely no, no. different, but for the so simple reason, going up the hill and then down. The and now we're into... Uh, no, that, that's Wilkins and Chapman's. That's Chapman's. the old name. That's the old name. Oh, there was Zulu, Zulu was to be the old name. That was the. I got a T-shirt. We're, we're, we're talking about. I got. I got a T-shirt. I won a race here in 1999, mm -hmm. and it was it was yeah, the old circuit. And I've still got the T-shirt. It shrunk a bit in the wash. Still no racing. So we're still going to slow. This could be. Uh, this could be a, a, a you know a, a, a slow race. Um, Harrison, it's going to, could be the easiest win he's ever had. Wonder what Nicole Sutherland's question is going to be. So Harrison, how was the tyre saving uh, that you managed to do whilst driving at seven miles an hour? Well, uh, <laughs> what it does show. Yes. How important qualifying is. In yes. This, is in this kind of format. Well, because yeah, you get short heats, and if you're someone uh, down at the, I mean, well, okay, if you're someone like uh, Jack Thompson, qualified 21st, he's still running. 21st. Mm. He's had no opportunity to gain ground. So that one, whether, whether he missed the setup or whether it's just overall pace. Um, but yeah, Harrison, I mean, it would be somewhat cruelly ironic if they give the green flag on the final lap and, uh, oh, there's the number 16 cart has uh, Matteo Palazzo from Saltire Motorsport. Good to see that Saltire team name. Duncan White uh, his crew back in the British paddocks. So Matteo um, the Scottish team, but it would be somewhat a cruel irony if, um, yeah, they. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say it. <laughs> if they if they give Harrison which the green flag at the start of the last lap, he goes to the Christmas corner and gets hoofed right into the bank. No, I'm joking. It wouldn't happen. Sure. So round again. Are we green? Now we are green. So two laps then. Eleven seconds on the clock. Oh, as we go back screen, there's a problem for one of the not strawberries. Gone. Uh, going slowly, I think it might. Is that Zach McDonald in the number 80? Who's uh, no, it's the 21. It's the 21 of Victor Hansen. So the, there has also been a problem for Zach yeah. McDonald. Two of the strawberries uh, having problem there at the start or restart of the race down the inside. There oh, is Zach dear. McDonald. That's on the track. Is that on the exit of the final yes, corner it is. as well? Oh, I hope. Hope the marshals are going to. The marshal here at Wilton Mill, very, very good indeed. Now. On track back, well, the number 17 car, that's Harrison Crowther, back with Coles Racing, uh, running in seventh position and holding up a huge 
huge heap of drivers. Look at this, how packed the paddocks are, you know, and uh, the spectator gantry. It's a chock a block as the last lap begins. And a change for the lead. Lewis Goff has gone through past Harrison Whittacombe. Here they are fighting for it once more. Joshua Turnbull just there in third for Evolution Racing as well. Going through increments now, down towards the braking zone of Ashby. Goff checks to the inside. No way through there for Whittacombe, but has he gone a bit too deep? No, that's a good recovery from Lewis Goff. Whittacombe's got a reducing number of opportunities to overtake. He's now having to fend off Harry oh. Freeman behind. Uh, so apologies, it's Harry Freeman who's come through. He's got yeah. past Joshua Turnbull for third place into the new style of the boot for the final time in this one. Lewis Goff should comfortably bring this one home in a, in a disrupted race by that slow period. And through goes Lewis Goff, takes the win. Zero points on his scorecard for uh, the intermediate classification. Harrison Whittacombe, not the win he wanted, Henry, but a good conversion through to a, a decent result. Yeah, I mean, he'll be doubly frustrated having, you know, led most of the race albeit under caution now for all we know that harrison's cart the, the tire pressures the, the mechanics set the pressures and the, and the setup of the cart to run eight laps or how many laps that was nine laps or more in the case of a four speeder at full racing speed and of course you know but uh how did they get a chance to do that but lewis goff sam pollock racing on top of the finishing order there uh, Whittacombe second, Harry Freeman, good drive from Harry for Evolution Racing. Josh Turnbull, Charlie Neve has moved from MLC to Strawberry Racing. And Brian and Truman, Harrison Crowther and the rest down there. Hopefully, um, uh, Isabella Stansmore, Wilson and Rory Armstrong. Okay, okay, here we go. Telephone of doom. Well, Harry Freeman goes through, he's okay. And into the pit lane, now over the way scales. I try and stay away from them. Uh, at all costs. And... Uh, I, I love this. Oh, and here's someone trudging down there. That's the number nine. He, well, Leon Hasty he was a bit hasty getting out of his go-kart there. He obviously didn't like it and was not happy. Where did Leon finish? Ah, I'm not surprised Leon didn't like it. He was 15th. That's a poor result for, for Leon. So he's uh, there's Canada's Ryan Gandor in the number 71. And, uh, well, it's like the green room in Formula One, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so all we need now is to have... You know, Something to throw a cap at each other, you know. It was <laughs> coach, uh, coach up. Oh dear. Uh oh. Jake Woods. Uh, or is that just he wants to take a photo with this nice Iridium visor with his logo on him? And sunglasses. And sunglasses. Of course. Of course. Um, that's the end of this uh, this rotation for Junior Rotax. Next time we'll see them back out. Group C, of course, we haven't seen in this uh, in this round. Group C. Uh, so if there oh, is a, if there is a is Group a, C race, oh, I love. Group I want to see a right Rothman's now. Porsche coming down. The, no, no, really. A Sauber C9 as well. Oh, so into, into the, no, uh, don't into start the now. Um, so if if there is a Junior Rotax driver you are particularly following and you're going, hang on a minute, I've not seen them out on track. It'll be because they're in Group C. Yes, uh, you, group can't, C you, can't will race. Another, you can't have them going straight back out, can no. you? No. So Group C will go up against Group D at around, or well, on the schedule, 4.15 this afternoon, and then we'll see Groups A and E uh, out at 16.15. No, round, it'll bang be 40, on it'll, be, it'll be 16, 15 hours and zero seconds on the dot. This is the, this is the Motorsport UK British Championship. We run things to schedule. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, next out on Because you, know you know what? In the Motorsport UK British Championship, lateness is not tolerated. It's not tolerated at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mini Max 950 out next. Uh, groups B and C from the timed qualifying earlier on this uh, morning. Uh, so, say, so from uh, this afternoon. And uh, another group of drivers heading out on circuit shortly. But I, Nicole Sutherland has caught up to uh, a couple of drivers, maybe not so too tired out, but she's with them now. We're here with race winner Lewis Goff. Lewis, you saw most of the race there under full course yellows. You were in second. Can you just explain a little bit to us about how the race went for you? Uh, well, it wasn't much interesting since it was uh, Battenberg for most of the race. Um, then as soon as it went green flag, um, me and Harrison, uh, we got that gap, he defended, and I just got the switch back perfect timing for me, basically, because it was on the penultimate lap, then I went on to the last half with a b big gap um, against him, so I just won that heat very, very nicely. Yeah, that's great. And for some of the audience at home that might not know, earlier on in the year, you auditioned for the FIA Academy Championship. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you learnt from that and what you're going to do with that learning for this year? 
Um, well, it was all about uh, fitness and how sh uh, strong you are and how um, how you could be in the car as well, doing a test around here in the OKJ, um, what was very good. And um, with that, it just, uh, since I didn't win it, but it just gave me that extra confident boost to push even harder. That's fantastic, Lewis. Thanks very much. And we'll go back to the commentary box, Henry and Andrew. Thank you very much, uh, Nicole Sutherland down there in the paddock. Well, we mentioned the FIA Academy. Uh, the representative for 2024 starts uh, in this one. Uh, remember, this is groups B and C heading out on circuit. So uh, Finley Hines uh, does, uh, Finley Lines does not take part in this race, but on pole position for this one, Edward Haynes and, as mentioned, Kean Bernard. 2024 FIA Academy representative for the United Kingdom. Albert Friend and Jack Collinson start on row two for this first Minimax 950 race of the weekend. Tom Reed and Emerson McCandu Uren, the reigning champion from Micromax, are on row uh, three. Spencer. Spencer, King, Hines, Ambrose, Cleary, and Cormac here, top 12. Hasnain Khan, Harry Taylor, Alex Goodson, Theo Bradshaw, and the rest. Good to see Kieran Stewart back uh, in. The, 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 the what number is he? He's back there in the pack in the number 14 car. Had to break his leg earlier, uh, l late last year, but uh, he is back. But here we go. Lights are out. We're off and racing here with a full Mini Max grid. 32, no, 30 drivers in this heat. Oh, what a problem there. Somebody's spinning to the outside in the middle of the pack, but everybody else makes their way up towards Christmas Corner, and it's a great start from Alby Friend. I'll be friends uh, three times uh, a top 10 finisher in the Rotax Grand Finals. He's uh, not got his ticket. He went out to the Rotax Winter Trophy in Florida. It was very, very, very unlucky not to get uh, the championship win there, which would have guaranteed him a ticket to this year's Rotax Grand Finals in Sarno, Italy. But uh, interestingly, of the three drivers that raced in Minimax last year that dominated the championship, Friend, Jacob Ashcroft and Cole Denham, Friend is the only one that is not old enough yet to move up. Yes. So, so he, it, it's going to be a very, it, it, it's be a very, very tough year for Albie Friend because everyone would now expect him to dominate and clean up everything. But of course, that's never going to happen. And then the case is you've got nine of the top ten from Micromax have taken the step up. So there's a particularly yeah. oh. strong group coming through. Yes, and As that's the number 19. There, the 19. That's, that's, uh, that's going to be Collinson. Jack Collinson. Jack Collinson moving down the order now. There's a the number 53 of Harry Taylor going for a move on Riley Murrow. That is for seventh place. Again, so many of these micro drivers moving up. It's going to be a very, very packed grid. And of course, just the general nature of Minimax itself means that it's difficult for one driver to pull away. Haynes, Spencer, Friend, Emerson McAndrew Uren, who went out to uh, race, represented the UK. Oh, there's Emerson going over that curb now. Come on now, because your dad can't afford lots of new chassis. Uh, to think, think of the wallets, Emerson as uh, he goes across the line, he's got the fastest lap though, so being aggressive does help. It does indeed, and uh, Emerson showed what he can do in uh, in that Micromax category previously as well. Six minutes to go, good move there. That's uh, Finley Hines down the uh, inside and gaining another position up to eighth place past uh, Finn, uh, Riley Moore. I'm already getting with Finley's confused. because Well, there's Finley Lines Hines and Finley Hines. Yeah. Well, I would say, well, I, 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 Finley Hines has missed the trick because he's not number 57. Oh, he's 57 varieties still. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's poor. I, it's, I'm, I'm still warming up. It's been a long <laughs> winter. I've been away a lot, and now I've got to get back into the cheap puns. It's, uh, for, fin for Finley Lines, yes. uh, and He'll Sergi be Factory later. will be out later on, was the fastest driver in qualifying uh, earlier ah. on this afternoon. While we're watching that, I just want to make, uh, pick up one driver down in 20... I met him earlier the first time. Amrit Singh Atwal for Ambition Motorsport. Mm. What a lovely young man he is. He, came, he shook my hand saying, it's nice to meet you. You've never met me before. I listen to your commentary all the time. Um, you're not as good as Anthony Jordan, but I still like you. No, I, I don't know. And um, he said, he said, oh, my, name's, uh, my name is Amrit Atwal. It's a pleased to meet you. I thought, what a lovely young man. You know, that, that's just great. Anyway, he's running in, just outside the top 20 at the moment. Uh, that is in uh, the number 13 cart for the Ambition Motorsport team. So I just like to say, you know, wanna, there he is. And uh, right on cue, it's almost, it's almost, it's almost it's interesting, but yeah, 
Paul James has done a great job. Well, I think he's probably a well-mannered young man despite Paul James. I'm only joking, mate. I'm only joking. But no, it just goes to show that what we do in karting, Andrew, we do with all the media attention, the cameras, the interviews, you know, we do create young professional athletes, you know, yeah. which is great to see. Anyway, back to the racing. Edward Haynes in cart number 46 is still leading. Is indeed. There's been a change for second place. Albie Friend has got back ahead of Oliver Spencer. Oliver Spencer, uh, who, of course, took a victory uh, in this meeting last year. Uh, that was in the Micromax category, the very first uh, of the 2023. Yes, uh, Micromax O plate. O -plate mm. for the curtain uh, that razor. And, uh, oh, oh, his friend is off, off, and he's going to rejoin the circuit, but lose probably about 10 positions with that. That was on the uh, the initial, that was on the toe of the boot, Ooh, which is that? unchanged from before. And, and it's all getting a little bit feisty there with the number 55 and others involved as well. So that is what you call an unintended consequence of the new corner. Somebody mm. comes up back on the track and they're slow, they got muck on their tyres, and of course you've got drivers... That, it's a one-line racetrack, and of course you've got to be aggressive, and that was just a little bit of, you know, a, a, you know, bumping and boring, but it, not really a fault of anybody going through the, the final corner. Um, it just, yeah, one of those unintended consequences of suddenly having a very slow corner where there was a very fast corner. Yeah, it's, uh, it was Ambrose, Murrow, and Goodson also involved uh, in the latter stages uh, of that event out there on circuit. Three minutes to go. Edward Haynes now leading by 1.4 seconds. What have the chasing pack got here? Headed up by Oliver Spencer now, then the 36 of Tom Reed, who's taken that third place away from Emerson uh, McAndrew-Yearen in the second of the DHRs in that trade. Difficult position this now for Edward Haynes. We always oh. say it with the younger categories. As down the inside goes Reed on Spencer, side by side. Potter oh, 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 that's not a good moment at all for the two DHRs. And Emerson McAndrew-Yearen gets back on the circuit, but he's going to be down in around 10th places out of the race. Is, Josh is the number 21 of Josh Cormack oh, and the 91 of Albie Friends. Yeah, I think Albie Friends probably thinking, oh, well, so they're dropping like fries here. But the Falkirk Tire and Service Centre sponsored driver Josh Cormack, there's Albie Friend, who has a little, Ooh, oh, a little trip. That's the other problem with having cameras everywhere is they catch drivers falling over. So I hope Albie's OK. I want to say a big hope you're OK as well to Lachlan Johnson. Uh, mm. Come all the way down from Scotland, uh, had a bit of a funny turn yesterday, and has had to go all the way back up to Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, sorry, I uh, hope you get well soon, uh, Lachlan. I know his dad, Stuart, uh, is, uh, is, is chiming in there, so uh, get well soon, Lachlan. Now, there is the move, number yeah, sorry, going going back sorry recovery. He's yeah. becoming number three now because there's a big uh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's a bit what, of a mark on the side of his That's what confused me. I'm easily, <laughs> I'm easily confused, as you'll as you'll learn. It's Haynes, Tom the Farmer, Reed, Charlie King, Oliver Spencer, Finley Hines, Harry Taylor, Collinson, Jamie Ambrose or Jaime Ambrose, Riley Murrow, and Alex Goodson. Your top ten. Uh, with the several retirements, okay, Leo Livings is up seven places to 12th. Max Wheatley up 13 places to 16th. And uh, Kian Bernard, well, we haven't mentioned Ke Kian Bernard much. I mean, he's down to 19th uh, at the moment. So that is not there. Fenton Stoneman, I think is the half brother to Dean Stoneman. Oh, and that is a uh, number 26 cart of Alex Goodson there. Just defending his position, going across the top and then down towards Ashby's. Less than a minute to go. Absolutely. Edward Haynes still in control of this one. McAndrew Ewan a little bit wide there, going down through Ashby. I uh, see the uh, one of the Zips, uh, Zip Factory team recovering as well. I think that was Benjamin Lawn in the number 85. Uh, looking for good things from Benjamin this weekend. Loves an overtake at any race circuit that he goes to. 30 seconds remaining on the clock. So we're going to get a couple more laps here for this first heat of the weekend for Minimax. Everybody races twice through the heats, remember, before the super heats tomorrow. Five second penalty on our race control notifications there for number 44, Theo Bradshaw. As uh, that's not good news also for it's number 55, uh, 53 moving down the order of Harry Taylor, apologies. And uh, shows once again just how important the momentum train is in Minimax. And uh, oh, lastly, in fact, that's much more loss of momentum for the number 53 of Taylor. That is Harry out of the race. And he did not look wonderfully impressed with the uh, that recent turn of events, uh, sadly, as uh, we are now into the closing moments. There's the number 
There's the 42 car. That's Oliver Spencer. Uh, again, has moved teams this year. He was with the Synergy team last year, as I recall. Now with Dan Holland racing. And uh, even with all the chaos that's happened in this race, we have still got 27 drivers running, including uh, my new friend uh, Amrit Atwal in 26th position. Um, so yes, but the final lap, Edward Haynes, six tenths of a second in front of Tom Reed. And it's looked pretty comfortable throughout the entirety of this race. And challenged from pole position. Two drivers who started behind him on that grid have fallen by the wayside in this one. Still side by side between McAndrew Yearen and the number 13 Three there, Riley Morrow. <laughs> trying to squeeze through there as well as that Otis Cleary involved in all of that. The checkered flag is out. Haynes has taken the first heat of the weekend, followed by Reed, King, Spencer and Hines. Other positions to be decided as they come across the line. Collinson in sixth, Ambrose, Khan, Goodson and McAndrew, uh, McAndrew Yearen in the top. 10. Good drive there from Riley Murrow as well, up six spots to 11. Now, while we wait for the full results to come through, in that race, we saw a five-second penalty, which was dished out to Theo Bradshaw. That's an in-race penalty. We've got a brand new uh, camera angle, a brand new angle to bring you ah. in the camera room. Now, the officials here at the Motorsport UK Vera Tools British Car Championship have a bank of cameras they watch. There's David Manchester, uh, furthest from the camera, holding the radio. He is studying that screen there. That shows about 15 or 60 different cameras around the circuit. The driver next to him, that's Alfie Garford, hmm. former junior TKM British champion, uh, TKM Extreme British champion last year. Yes, Alfie is our driver steward. Because it's all well and good there. Uh, we have a panel, of, a panel of stewards and people that are just... Uh, adjudicates on incidents, mm -hmm. but Alfie's a driver. He knows all the tricks in the trade. So he is going to be there helping to decide, look, okay, that's a racing incident. I can see how that happens as a driver, or I know exactly what that driver was doing, and he's, he, he's, he's advising. But we can bring you deep in, uh, yeah, inside the Motorsport UK truck to show how decisions are made during the course of events. There is your provisional results for the first heat in Mini Max. Edward Haynes takes it from Tom Reed, Charlie Spencer, Oliver, uh, Charlie King, Oliver Spencer, Finley Hines, Jack Collinson, uh, Jaime Ambrose, Hasnain Khan, Alex Goodson, Emerson, McAndrew, Yeren inside the top 10. Riley Morrow, 11th, Otis Cleary, Leo Livings, Keen Bernard, uh, and Benjamin Lawn inside the top 15. Uh, Max Wheatley, Devin Taylor, Theo Bradshaw, oh. Blair oh, Smith. Hang on. Have, you got and, your, have you got your bleep camera? Because oh. Mark Baines is on camera and Jordan <laughs> Baines. Have you got the swear bleeper just coming in? Uh, uh, Blair, uh, Blair Smith in the 56. Now, we should explain. There are two Blair Smiths uh -oh. in Minimax, which is a commentator's nightmare. Uh, but uh, Blair Smith in the 56, the privateer, uh, inside the top 20, uh, completed by Louis Radcliffe. Kieran Stewart, Fenton Stoneman, Ollie Thompson, oh, uh, Connor Adam Jodaitis, and Connor J. Winfield all in the top 25. Wow, Amrit more. Atwal, 26, retirements for Taylor, Burton, Friend, and Cormac. Did you spot there? Oh, I saw Connor result? Winfield getting the, uh, oh, no. the mobile the phone of mobile doom. Phone of doom. Uh, uh, interesting, look at it. So, Theo Bright, uh, sorry, Devin Taylor uh, coming over from South Africa uh, to race here. And you've got, obviously, Adam uh, Jodaitis. Uh, from Lithuania, but Nicole Sutherland is going to have uh, a couple of happy drivers and probably a couple of unhappy drivers down in the pits now. So we're here with our Mini Max race winner, Edward. How was your race? Well, it was fantastic. I led right from the start. Of course, I haven't got by me um, like in turn two, but we were talking and um, had a big gap, so I'm happy with that, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And are you feeling confident for the rest of your heats and going into the rest of the weekend? Yeah, definitely. I came here to win, so I'm aiming to win. And I've already won one, so just need to win the next one. Yeah, that's fantastic. And for the year, you've joined Thule Motorsport as well. How are you getting on so far with Thule? Oh, yeah, Thule's fantastic. It's a great team. Um, I was in RC before. That was a good team. But um, I've joined Thule now, and it's going well. Well, the very best of luck for the rest of your weekend, Edward. We'll go back up to Henry and to Andrew for the next race. Thank you very much. And indeed, the next race out on circuit will be the first appearance of the eagerly anticipated senior oh. road tax category I'm for gonna, the weekend. Uh, I'm Henry, are you sit, okay? I'm, I'm going to sit, gonna sit, down, sit down, down and I'm going to take my tablets before this one. <laughs> 60 drivers. 60 drivers. 
But uh, we're going to see which of the 60 drivers are up in heat number one next. Sixty drivers indeed. Here is the first portion of them. This is groups A and C heading out on circuits. Reigning champion uh, in both the O plate and, of course, the British Kart Championships for senior road tax. Kai Hunter now with Hunter Motorsport, having left DHR yep. in the off-season, starts on pole position. He's joined on the front row by Jack Lilly, Tyler Harris, and Teddy Pritchard. Williams Super Ted now with Strawberry Racing. Spoke to him yesterday in the paddock show. Very happy to be there on the uh, second row of the grid. Reg Haywood and Ben Folland on row three. Caden McQueen and Lorenzo Cordal start for row number four. Lucas Ellingham, really strong in the old plate last year for Jack Dax Racing. Uh, he starts at the inside of row number five alongside Deacon Russell, Sam Baker and the aforementioned lap record holder Guy Cunnington on the outside of row number six. Spencer Brougham, who came within a whisker of becoming the E20 World Rotax champion in Bahrain last year. He starts 13th, gave favour of the back in karting uh, after racing minis last year. Ralph Youngling, uh, the older brother of Timo Youngling, who is the junior Rotax Grand Finals champion, all the way back to Gemma Hyons. 30th position. Ho oh, ho! This is goats to be good. Here we go then for the start of eight minutes plus one lap in what's going to be a frenetic senior Rotax weekend. Good start for Kai Hunter up towards Christmas for the first time. Looks like they're all about making their way through. Yep. A beautiful start from the driver who's won the O-Plate the last two years it's, it's, uh, in it's seniors. Three, three in total. Three and this four. would be a fourth O-Plate. If he wins once more, he can have an Olympic Games of O's. Mm. Uh, the but junior champion in 2019, of right. course, as well, very much knows how to win an O-plate, but he's got a long way to go here. That's a good move by Guy Cunnington as Benjamin oh. Southgate is off on his first weekend in the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. Yes. And uh, that's not the way that Ben would have wanted to start there uh, in the grass, but I think he has been able to keep uh -huh. going at least. Now there... That's the number 41. That's Reese Bailey going uh, a little bit slower than he would have liked to be. He's been off somewhere. Indeed. So, one lap gone. Hunter leads from Harris. Lily, uh, Pritchard Williams. Good start for Cader McQueen as well. Up two spots to fifth place. That is Reg Haywood on the move. Uh, very experienced driver, of course, particularly around, around here. And, of course, Reg, now, when Reg was in Minimax, he would have to, to he had, like, he's obviously quite a tall lad. He would have to have no graphics kit on his cart to get himself up to, uh, up to like, well, get himself down to minimum class weight. But just to give you an idea of how strong the grid is, Guy Cunnington there running 12th position. He is or moving up to 11th now. Again, former British champion, you know, has won multiple titles in karting, you know, in and won many, many races in the British Championship, not even breaking into the top 10. And this is a heat race, uh, the second year for his own team, Guy Cunnington Racing, in the British Championship. There's a move. And uh, Guy obviously now is starting to pick them off one by one. Couple of things. Teddy Pritchard-Williams running in fourth place. He's just set the fastest lap of the race. Now, for years, Teddy's been the underdog. Mm. He doesn't race that often. He races with MLC Motorsport. Great team. But, you know, not one of the traditional powerhouses. You know, you've got, when you think of the powerhouses, you've got KR Sport, Dan Holland Racing, Strawberry Racing, MLC, and like the likes of Sam Pollitt and Tooley Motorsports, they were sort of just, just bubbling under that thing. Now, of course, Teddy has gone on to Strawberry Racing, so the pressure is on a little mm. bit for Teddy Pritchard-Williams. He's definitely delivering at the moment, as I think there's been a problem for Lucas Ellingham, because oh. Lucas Ellingham falling down the order... Uh, club champion here at Wilton Mill for many, many years as Lorenzo Cordal's on the attack, goes down the inside, gains a position. As expected, Henry, it's all going on out there for the seniors. Yeah, Guy Cunnington picking up another place. Two wheels on the curb going into Ashby's. That was on the inside curb. Oh, and somebody gets shown the door. That is one of the Tooley Motorsport carts, the number 81 uh, of ben Everyone's Folland. Ben Folland. Everyone's changed classes, teams and numbers. And, uh, but uh, good to see the zip colours back in Rotax. They came, they had a little go at uh, Rotax. They're running with this, that's uh, Lorenzo Cordal, formerly of the Cato Motorsport team. And uh, now Zip, yeah, I think, I'm not quite sure what chassis they're using. They're using an OTK product, I believe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just branded as a team. 
There is, oh, and that's dangerously close to a lap record, I think, for Caden McQueen. It is indeed. Caden oh. McQueen has really got going in this one. That's not a good moment for Guy Cunnington, who's been in good form uh, from last week, but it's not quite going right today, as that is on the attack. Spencer, Spencer uh, Brown. Brown in the one of three CRGs here this weekend. Well, that's uh, two good. more than last year, and I can't understand why, because the CRG is a very well-built wagon. Very, very good indeed. Go. Side by side going into the boot. Reg Hayward on the inside holds on to that position there inside the top ten. Four minutes gone, four minutes to go. Kai Hunter in, I wouldn't say total control of this right now, Henry, but a good level of control. Four tenths clear of Jack Lilly, who's just set the fastest lap of the heat so far. And again, Jack Lilly, a very, very talented driver. Uh, I remember he had, a, I think it was two years ago, he had to spend six months out of the seat, broke his wrist and then came back. I was very impressive. There goes Gabe. Was that Gabe Fairbrother getting involved in the number 11 cart? I think it was. Of course, Gabe back with his Ultima R team. Um, now, Tyler Harris, there is actually a bit of a correction there. So they've got his name wrong. His name is actually Richie Harris. The, like the actor. Hunt, look, well, no, 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 no that's showing your age there, Andrew. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, no that's, uh, uh, I, was, I was doing the, uh, the last round of the, United, the UAE Rotax Championship, and he was insisting, Henry, you've got to call me Richie. Okay, so okay. I'm going to call you Richie, fair enough. Now, that is about as comfortable as uh, Kai Hunter has had things all race, and of course, he's gone home, he's gone back to his, you know, brother Reese's team, you know, the whole Hunter family up a cart in northeast at Warden Law, which is quickly becoming a, a mecca mm. of karting up there. I have to say that you know, the circuit gets better every time we visit there. There's more improvements. This, it's a fantastic track. The venue is fantastic. You know, you can just smell the sea of the, uh, sm smell the salt of the North Sea air that whistles across Ward Law, making it somewhat less than balmy mm. uh, when the weather is not great. It can be a cold place, but uh, cold temperature, but they got warm hearts up there. Although uh, Kai Hunter's not going to be very warm to Jack Lilly if Jack Lilly gets any closer because he'll have to defend and uh, Kai will introduce himself to Jack Lilly as somebody who was very tough to overtake. Absolutely. Broke the, uh, the run of trying to get the British Championship title last year, of course, with that yes. uh, pulsating final at PF International. Warden Law, of course, was one of the circuits that uh, the Rotax... Oh, that's up Hello. there. That's the number 31. That's one of the JDRs. That that's is Sam, Sam Baker. Baker. Ah, and, and a bit of a cart blanket there well, to, uh, on the foot, but it's the not been a good race for JDR because they've already lost one of their races. For, uh, uh, Lucas Ellingham contention. had dropped back, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, now, plus Hello. five second penalty on our ah. race control notifications board for cart number 33, Jack which is Jack Lilly. Lilly. in second position. So that will drop Jack down to at the moment that will put him back in seventh position now there is a big digital display board going across the start finish line so the drivers will be able to see that so jack will be aware that he's got a five second penalty now we've got 90 seconds plus a lap to go caden mcqueen is closing in and i always have to say that's not caden mcqueen because that's on a crock and then i realized no he's chaos sport now uh, then there's Tyler Harris, uh, MLC Motorsport have got a slightly new graphics kit, which has to, uh, Lee, Lee, Lee Murray and Donna, they're going to batter me for saying this. It looks a little bit too much like the Thule Motorsports graphics kit, and I can't tell the difference. But don't tell anyone. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Uh, Sam Baker, you saw there, has recovered back to pit lane. He's out of this race. Well, Kai Hunter has uh, turned up the wick so far today in qualifying. Was the fastest driver in times qualifying across those three average laps, of course. Good chance as well to, uh, to have a good look at this new CS55. So ah, this is the yes. Carlos Sainz chassis. It's another one of the OTK family. Uh, I had a look at them yesterday with Kai in, in the Hunter Motorsport. Uh, awning. I know all of these awnings here are, are, are prepared beautifully and professionally, but I was particularly impressed with the setup they've got down there yes. uh, in the lower reaches of the paddock. They're very focused this weekend. But, but you know, um, uh, you know, why does it look like a CRG? Why have, why have they designed it? Why is, why is the graphics kit look like a CRG? You know, come on, Mr. Abatsi. Uh, time is up then. Last lap board will be shown the next time the leaders are coming over the line. This is the battle for sixth place. Lorenzo Cordell ahead of Ben Folland. Uh, uh, Spencer 
Brom in the CRG. Looking down the inside now of Follen. Drivers who know the circuit very well, but that's not a good moment for Ben Follen losing three positions. I think Deacon Russell was able to get through in all of that uh, state of play. Leaders over the line, final lap board out. Still not done this for Kai Hunter on the road, but at least if Jack Lilly was to get ahead, that plus five second penalty would reverse well, things. Well, I don't think Jack is even going to try and make a move because he knows he's got a five second penalty. So he's just trying to get as far away from as many drivers as possible behind. So, I mean, we may, but I, I doubt it. I think Jack is going to sit there. Kai keeps checking over his shoulder, but uh, Jack, this is this is this show how smart Jack is the racer. Uh, Kade McQueen goes through, last lap move. Does Jack Lilly fight it? No, he looks straight over his shoulder, gets his head down and tries to push on nice. because he was going to be seventh. He's now going to be fifth, fifth possibly, Four, fifth or sixth. So that tactic from Jack Lilly, as Kai Hunt to take the check the flag, has worked. Smart driving for Lilly, even though he's going to be upset with, uh, you know, getting the penalty. But Kai Hunter, who did say that he won the British title, well, he was always going to be leaving Dan Holland at the end of last year. Yep. Kai was going to, was, he was going home. You know, his brother Reese. this is the third year now for Hunter Motorsport as a team. First year, they burst onto the scene really impressively. Last year, they, they sort of plateaued a little bit. Mm -hmm. So adding Kai Hunter to the, to the, the you know, the family album, so to speak, has, has really helped. And Kai has already won the Dubai O plate. Uh, yep. That's the first major 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 trophy for them not quite sure what happened to the higher car keys after that but we'll ask kai uh but there we go kate mcqueen second jack lilly third tyler ritchie harris fourth then guy cunnington considering that guy cunnington was 12th uh not when bad. we first looked, that's not a bad effort uh and there's a list of finishes game favor the drop back there matt lambert matthew lambert for the nib sport team nibbers uh good to see matt isaacs uh with his own team now in the paddock. No, good, uh, good drive there from Kai Hunter. Lots of reasons to be pleased. And uh, yes, having left DHR, still very friendly with DHR. Uh, oh, of course, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, it, it, was, it, was an it was an amicable yesterday. divorce. It was an amicable divorce. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see his <sighs> former teammate Matthew Higgins shortly. Uh, as well in one of the upcoming races for the seniors. B and D, groups B and D uh, will be out next on circuit. Good congratulations there between Hunter and McQueen. I, I, I he's don't still, he's still, the I don't, still I don't want to say Henry. much, Caden, but uh, you're looking a little bit puffed out there after just uh, how many laps? 12 laps. Kai Hunter looks like he's just gone out of bed. And uh, Caden, he's puffing and blowing. I, you know, he's obviously been to the gym as much as I have over the winter as Caden. Uh, Benjamin Southgate Ooh. coming in, did get going again, did uh, did Benjamin Southgate pro train, finished P24, rest of them uh, coming in. Who gained the most places in that last race, because we always like to mention that. Stefan Kaczmarczyk, uh, Kaczmarczyk uh, up 8 to 14th, well done to Stefan there. We're going to go down to Park Ferme though, and to Nicole Sutherland. So over here with Kai Hunter. Kai, three O plates already in your, in your books, what are you thinking about the fourth? Uh, yeah, it'll be nice to do it, but this, uh, it's a long road ahead. I think this, uh, this, the new, the new track has changed, so it's a bit more challenging than last year. But I think we're going to have to give it everything that we've got and see where, see where it ends us. So, talking about the new track, obviously last corner put in as a big safety feature. What do you think it's like to race on? Are you enjoying it? Uh, yeah, it, it honestly depends of what ratio gearing you have. Because if you obviously have big sprocket on, then you, you're amazing down there, but not great down the straight. So I think it's a, it makes you um, think about it in a bit more strategic way. So putting a different um, cog on the back. But I think for a corner to drive, it's not too bad. I think it does a job. It, it's just another challenge. I think Wilton needed to do it because of safety. So I, I have nothing against it. That's great. I'm sure we'll be seeing some more of you this weekend, Kai. So we'll break now to hear a word from our partners. Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, getting ready for the next race, race five on our schedules here today at Wilton Mill for the 2024 British O-Plate. The heat's day, first day of two 
for racing and uh, senior road tax groups B versus D Henry up next and another strong crop of drivers for us to enjoy. Yes, indeed. But before we move on, I've been distracted, which is easy when you're as thick as I am. Um, I want to know, and this is, you know, not, I want to know what a Fanny Bomb, Buckfast and Iron Brew is, uh, which apparently was being served in the Tooley Motorsport tent. So Stuart Angus, uh, uh, tell me what that is. But while you figure out what a Fanny Bomb Iron Brew is, let's go to race five, heat two, CD Rotax up next. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go through to the grid then for this next one. King Geraghty has pole position for uh, this next heat, racing for Strawberry Racing uh, yet again, but also taking up the spanners to an extent himself now as well as part of the Geraghty Motorsport effort. Yes. He's running very well in Europe so far this year and was quick in qualifying earlier. Alongside him, Lewis Gilbert going for another uh, good run in the hoe plate there. Matthew Higgins, second in the British Car Championships for Senior Rotax last year. Now the lead driver, of course, in uh, DHR with Kai Hunter moving back to Hunter Motorsport. Starts on row two. Joshua Graham, another mover to car, uh, KR Sport for this year on row two. Macaulay Bishop, the winner of the junior O place in the, the Rotax categories one year ago. Starts on row three alongside Morgan Porter. Okay, Gustavo Usikovs, Brandon Nagelvort, uh, Alex Cole, Ewan Charmer, Neil Clark, J the returning Jamie Perilli is next. His retirement lasts all of six months. Down at the back of the pack, watch out for Ducas Pravilonis. Here we go, though. Eight minutes plus one lap once again for Senior Road Tax. Good start from Geraghty into turn one and turn two. They go through fine lady as well towards Christmas for the first time. It's looking good through this field of 30 Senior Road Tax drivers through Christmas for the first time, all looking relatively calm, Henry, on this first lap. Ah, yes, well, I spoke too soon. No, no, as they, as they all deviate from the racing line, defence, defence, defence. Ah, yes, curse the commentator. Welcome, Andrew Mather. That's the number 50. There was a strawberry racing cart and the number 55 of uh, Ollie Goodyear on that privateer CIG looking slightly less than impressed with the uh, pirouetting uh, Tony cart that landed on top of him. Over the curb to the final corner at the end of lap number one. Garrity, Bishop, Higgins, Gilbert, Usakovs, Graham, Porter, Charman, Nagelvort and Clark. It's the, it's the young guns. It's the drivers moving up and there's Macaulay Bishop. He takes the race lead, and of course, Matthew Higgins now. He's the H Higgins and Gilbert, second and third. They're the elder statesmen. They like, what, what, what's these young, these young whippersnappers coming in and taking this? So Higgins is going to show what he's made of. Trafaglois is where Higgins is from in uh, mid Wales, mid hmm. to north Wales. Beautiful part of the world, of course. It absolutely is. There's Ollie Goodyear telling the uh, official there, or the uh, incident marshal, how hard done by he was. And I have to say, it was Sam Longley, the uh, strawberry racing driver that we saw colliding with uh, Goodyear. So, two laps in, and it's Bishop Higgins, Gilbert, Usakovs, Garrity, and the rest. On well, Macaulay Bishop, another driver who knows this place very well, of course. Gilbert fighting back down the inside of Higgins there, takes P2. Gustavs Uzakovs there as well, P4, wanting a part of this. Through Ashby, go, they go once again. Good start for Alex Moody, up uh, four places so far, is into the top ten. Uh, Luca Schlegel as well, the Austrian for Kraft Motorsports, is improving through the order, is up to 16th, and is in fact the fastest driver on the circuit in this heat at the moment. Yes, Luca Schlegel, again, that, that sort of Austro-German-Scottish conglomerates that is Kraft Motorsport there bringing, I've got to say the Gilbert family they did a great job bringing drivers over uh, you know, last year they had Zombo Kovacs over here with them they, you know, this year they got to Luca Schlegel uh, amongst others, uh, Yannick, Ye Yannick Jacobs, uh, you know, Kraft Motorsport driver and of course one driver who raced for Kraft Motorsport in this championship, in this event last year uh, Mats Johan Overhoff went on to beat Spencer Braun in the Rotax E20 Grand Finals in Bahrain. So uh, again, oh, there was a move. There's the move, the number 77 uh, cart getting involved. That was Alex Moody on the outside. Is that Alex Moody? I saw Alex earlier on. Is he in this race? Yes, he is. He's 13th. Now, 
Uh, if you have a look at Alex Moody, Alex, so Alex Moody in the number uh, 98 cart, running 13th for Cato Motorsport, he's got a brand new race suit. He has. Which he left at home. Ah. The Muppet. So he's got one that's been through the wash about 77,000 times. Change. Uh, there we go. Changing Back the lead. The yeah, uh, Lewis Gilbert sorry. has got ahead of Macaulay Bishop. Macaulay Bishop now under a real attack. Has lost second <laughs> oh. place. Oh, more attack now. And off there with Gustav Zuzikovs in the 89. It has all gone wrong just like that for the winner of the Junior O plate from last year. Two drivers moving out of juniors into seniors. And they both realise that in seniors, you do have to give a little bit more than you did in juniors. Neither driver wanted to give. Oh, and there's a piggyback going on. That's the number 40 cart of uh, Jamie Perilli up over the back of Neo Clark. Uh, they both sort of extricate themselves and sort and uh, get back going. Uh, here's Perilli now with the, the Jacks Project 1 racing with Gerard Cox team in the number 40 cart. But uh, yes, important lesson learned there for both Uzakovs mm -hmm. and Bishop. Sometimes yeah. you have to surrender the corner. Particularly when there's uh, the best part of four minutes to go in one of these heats. Gilbert still out front from Higgins. Garrity now back up to third place. Joshua Graham having a strong run in this one. And uh, his first race of the weekend for KR Sports. Another driver who's uh, been on the move in the off-season. Here's the number 46 of Morgan Porter. Uh, at the moment, sort of fighting. But I think at the moment it's a bit of a truce between himself and Ewan Sharman. That's because they've got nearly a second to find up to Brandon Klein Nagelvoort. Uh, they're inside the top five. Now, Jill, this, this is, shows why in karting, people try it. There's Alex Moody. It is. No, that's not Alex Moody. That's the Pro Train Racing number 12 of Jack Collins. Um, but uh, in karting, it, it, it does pay to sort of stay on good terms with everybody as much as possible. Cast your mind back to 2020. Last round of the British Championship. Oh, there's Alex Moody. It is a uh, much washed race suit making a move well obviously the, the suit's a bit lighter now because it's been washed so many yeah. times so it's more aerodynamically efficient sleek yes but morgan porter beat reese and kai hunter to the british title back in december 2020 here mm -hmm. in a somewhat fractious last round and here we are they're all racing for the same team owned by reese hunter so uh yeah swings and roundabouts and all that there's a birrell there's a birrell art and it belongs to you and charman it's moved to racing perfection. At the moment, is there in sixth place. Good move. They've not really been catching up to Brandon Klein, Navical Vort and the rest of them. There is uh, Romarian Ubi in the number 77 down the inside. A couple of drivers flirting with, uh, with the gravel there yeah. and the grass at the bottom of Ashby Corner. You, you can, right. It's so tempting to attack that corner, Henry. Oh, it's yeah. always a case of where, yeah. particularly in seniors, Gravity's working against yeah, yes, you. Yeah, because there's more. Yeah, there's more of you. I mean, I was an absolute nightmare in the corner because there's a lot more weight. Gra yeah, Isaac Newton ain't got nothing on me. Uh, one driver, very impressive so far. Jack Gillingham. 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 Uh, you say potato, I say potato. Uh, Jack Gillingham, uh, privateer driver. Now in the number 66. In the number 66, running 15th. Very impressive indeed. Props to any of the privateers out there doing well now. I, the last time we saw the Racing Perfection team in the British Championship, uh, the whole team were, were fighting tooth and nail to sort of release the carts. Mm. The cart would literally stick, you know, it, it, would, it, would, it would just stick. It, grip was, was not an issue. <laughs> Too much grip was an issue. So you and Charlie, hopefully they, just, they found a way to loosen that because the Birrell ART cart is a fantastic cart. You know, it's great to see all the different chassis manufacturers and brands in the sport, but Charman, in the number 42, the Charmander is, um, yes, is, is, is a bit of a cork in a bottle at the moment. Ethan Ling, uh, one of the Landau Kart Club originals in the number 76 cart. Driver that's very, very uh, well known up here, running as a privateer. Uh, he is there in the number 76 cart in 19th position. Again, uh, talk about drivers, you know. Ethan, he doesn't, I've known him, I've known him since he was a, since he's a, a very small cadet, so you don't mind me saying this. Ethan's autistic, and karting has helped him with ADHD on the spectrum, helped him in not just in terms of life, but in life mm. uh, and everything. And I know he's, he's him and his family. Uh, hello, Patricia, and I'm sure Steve's out there in the paddock, uh, elbow deep in, in Greece at the moment somewhere. But, uh, yeah, karting has helped that family just 
navigate their way through life. And it's certainly for Ethan, it's given him a, a much better understanding of, of, of life in general. But yeah, Charmander, uh, under pressure from just about everybody. Yeah, he's having to work really hard at the moment to hold on to this sixth place ahead of Porter, Pirelli, Rennie and Clark. Time is up. Leaders coming over the start finish line shortly as Porter has a look down the inside there. This is all going to get very close together as they run through the new final chicane. They're going to have to sort themselves out and sort of get one by one by the time they get round pit bend. Yep. And still, Charman holds on to position. Uh, one of the, it's the Neo Clark in the Thule Motorsport entry uh, well, that... coming through the order as well. Charman hard to drive us right, defending that inside line. It was now on the final lap. There's a warning there for the number 42 from race control. I was going to say, a new helmet colours for you and Charman uh, this year, but that was interesting. Neo Clark in the number 28 car took a different line. He took a tight line in, slowed it down at the start of that last corner, and then lost an awful lot of ground. So that's something that new that we're looking at. You want to defend going into that corner. Uh, you know, it does cost you a lot of speed on the apex because, of course, you're, coming, you're, you're trying to get to the power band uh, for a much lower speed. Check and flag is out, and it is a win for the Diamond Dorahe, Lewis Gilbert. Lewis Gilbert, 2021 British Open champion, O-plate holder. Uh, in the senior category previously starts his racing portion of the weekend with a victory. Very good stuff for Gilbert there and Craft Motorsport. Matthew Higgins finishes P2. Keen Garrity inside the top three as well. well. I think we're pretty pleased with that result to kick things off. Joshua Gray in P4. Brandon Klein Nagelvoort uh, home in a bit of a lonely fifth place, but a good fifth place. Five seconds clear of you in Charman, who did hold on to that spot on the road. Morgan Porter, Tristan Rennie, Neo Clark and Macaulay Bishop finishing the top 10. Decent recovery in, in respects for Bishop there. Henry yep. considering he was off the road, Cons but he'll want a lot higher than that later in the weekend. Yes, now there's Luca Schlegel. Welcome to the British Karting Championship, Luca. Uh, here we go. Now, this could be interesting. The, the telephone of doom could be busy at the end of that one. Um, very quickly, because I know Nicole will be down there in the pits at some point, we'll be able to bring you some interviews, but somebody on the live chat, Marky, is it free to watch? Well, of course, it's free to watch on Alpha, but it's free to watch here in person. Just come in. If they try to charge you on the gate, just tell your Henry's mate. And, uh, you know, just tell your Henry's mate, they'll lay you in. Not a problem at all. But yes, it is free to watch. We're here all day tomorrow. Please come down and watch the British Open Championship. And, and if you know someone who's on their way anyway, that is a big help as well, because it's a very full car park it's, this it's, weekend. It's so very full. Come together. Yeah. Save a bit of fuel. Save the environment as you come to watch an afternoon of motor racing. <laughs> uh, so there's a little chat between uh, Matthew Higgins and Kai Hunter, uh, the uh, teammates from last year, still very good friends. Of course, Higgins second in that last race. Is anybody having their oh, picture sure. taken? Well, at the moment, it's all looking okay for these drivers coming through. There goes the number well, uh, 29 actually, of Yannick. Uh, oh, oh, there, we go. Soon. Yannick, there we go. Yannick, Joshua uh, Rudd, sorry. Oh, Josh Rudd, sorry. Uh, now, actually, what you saw there was Kai Hunter chatting to his ex-teammate, Matthew Higgins. Indeed. You know, Dan Holland should probably go over there now and ban him because he was only there chatting to Matt so we could check out the settings on the cart. Yes. Only joking, only joking. <laughs> over to Nicole Sutherland, who is down the pit lane uh, very, very soon. They take it away, Nicole. We've just wrapped up our second senior Rotax heat of the day. Race winner, Lewis Gilbert. Lewis, how was your race? Yeah, it was pretty good, to be honest. Uh, a bit of a tough start, or going off second, but we got into fourth, and then after that, we just worked our way back to first, and then we got a, a nice little gap and just kind of cruised to the end, so I think it was a, a good race. Yeah, and so, obviously, O-Plate is the one that everybody wants. What are you thinking? Just consistency for this weekend, or...? Yeah, just, if I have good top three results, I think we'll, we've definitely got a chance. We've won it in the past, so we, we can definitely do it again, so I'm, I'm hoping we can just get a decent weekend and then see how it goes. Well, very best of luck, Lewis, thank you. So we'll head back up to the comms box now, and just a quick uh, ad break from our partners. Welcome back to Wilton Mill, getting ready for the next race out on circuit. It'll be the first 
racing appearance of the weekend, Henry, for Micromax. Now, we oh, talked excellent. earlier about how the top nine of... Uh, the top, oh, nine of the top ten from last year have moved up to Minimax, but yes. what is very good news is we've got a new uh, crop of talent oh, coming yes. in to, uh, to form a bumper grid of 31 drivers. Here a whole weekend. host, and some of them, including the 32, Logan Rolf, last weekend in another championship uh, up at Glanagh Gorse, the uh, car championship, run by Darren Beavers, which, um, I was at. Uh, no, um, Logan was in a Bambino. Really? Sure he was. He's moving up to Micromax this weekend. But anyway, a lot of these are moving. Uh, uh, maybe I'm lying. Maybe I've got it mixed up. I might have done. All I know, 100%, is that we're about to go to the first race for Micromax. Here we go then with the grid for Heat 1 in Micro Max. Charlie Page and Joshua Cook on the front row. Joshua Cook on the inside for pole position. Dean Pahal and Lucian Smith on row two. Luke Millwood and Elliot Travis on row three. On row number four, Max Jolly and Austin Oman. Logan Rolf, maybe in his first race in Micro, maybe not. Alfie Garrett, Alfie Mayer and Maximilian Abrahart. Uh, row seven, James Roots and Sebastian Behrman, Josh Hushka and Arthur Fair on row eight, Jensen Walker and Benedictus Masiokas on row number nine. Then we've got Archie Rogers, Tyler Harris, Barber, Chester Forks, Albert Farrow, William Crombie, ha Xavier Ramsey. That's your top 24, and still there are more. Harry Ratcliffe and Oliver Dawson on row 13. Ethan Lloyd and Toby Big starts on row 14. On row 15, it's Harper Das and Adam uh, Gal uh, Galudi. George Swire completes the 31 runners. Are we good for green? No, we're going to go around for an extra formation lap before the start of this one. Uh, lots of drivers on this grid, Henry. As I say, this is perhaps the first time that we've seen them in, well, within the Rotax yes. ladder, but plenty of experience for oh. these drivers. They've done uh, uh, other, cadet, other cadet classes, Bambinos, as, uh, as you say. I'm really looking forward to uh, see how this uh, new generation of drivers do this year. Yeah, and I think a lot of work has gone on behind the scenes in Micromax, uh, you know, and Minimax this year. Just, you know, obviously last year was the first full season for uh, Micromax in the British Championships. It was very competitive, but uh, yeah, the, the, you know, it's always a learning process, and I've got to say, when you look at the different teams involved, you know, this is what uh, is, is very impressive. You know, up at the front, you've, you've got, you know, you've got Synergy, you've got KR Sports, you've got the Richardson Chassis Engineering Group, you've got Jax, you've got Project One, you know, so many different teams, you know, different chassis, really good to see, and of course, the Micromax engine uh, providing extremely, extremely level playing fields. Here we go then, eight minutes on the clock and we're away. And Ooh. no, we're not going to go around for another extra formation lap. The course is out again there. And that allows, uh, I, I, I've got to say that we are getting some excellent camera shots here. We are literally almost uh, sitting with the driver, especially coming through the last corner. Because they're going slower now, it gives the Alpha Live camera crew much. And the same if you're at Christmas corner, you, you're, you know, you're getting close this year, 2024, Alpha are getting you closer to the action than ever anywhere and you know you, you you and i are very fortunate we commentate on karting all over the world for multiple different promoters uh you know broadcasters what have you but some of the some of the up close and personal shots you're getting are that's not as up close and person that's the number 38 car getting a little bit too up close and personal uh with that's luke millwood who uh represented team uk in the tillotson t4 world cup ah and there's lucian the number 44 smith. car of lucian smith um but hopefully we'll go again. Indeed. So uh, round four, uh, another time through the cut through, through the old layouts here at Wilton Mill. Are we ready for a go for eight minutes plus one lap? Yes, green lights. Away we go then. Joshua Cook from the front of the field takes the runners in. Micromax through turn one, through turn two, Oblivion and the Crook. Up past Fine Lady. It's a good start for our, some of our youngest drivers here this weekend. Down the inside, that's Austin Owen coming through. Was very good one week ago in the club meeting. Had a difficult qualifying, but that's a super start for Austin Owen for Sam Pollitt Racing from row four. Uh, down towards Ashby as we go. Spreading out three wide into, that's Wilkins now down the hill. And... Uh, 
One drive there already a little bit wider. That was the number 20. Oh, this is it the 24 card. Uh, side by side further up. That's Dian Pahal. <laughs> um, Dian Pahal was on the podium uh, last weekend at Gladagors in the karting championship. And uh, I say to Dian, I said on the phone, Dian, that's the best I've ever seen you drive. And he went, well, that's not very nice, is it? Are you trying to say that every other time you see me drive, I've been rubbish? <laughs> Cheers, Dian. No, he's a great, great kid doing extremely well, is Dian Bahal. Um, and, and also, I, what I do have to say is that, you know, Dian is, is a real ambassador, uh, you know, as well. Um, you, you know, he's, he's Sikh, he's, he's, he, and obviously he's very proud of his heritage, of his background, and, uh, you know, trying to make the sport more inclusive, mm. you, you know, the people of colour, people of the different ethnic minorities, different races, religions, they need to see, you know, people that look like them, you know, to doing well. Team. And Dean is doing well. well. And, he's, and, he, and Dean wants to inspire, you know, other members of the Sikh community into karting, which I think is, uh, is, is an excellent thing. And, uh, yeah, even... And he's very quick-witted as well, as I discovered to my Harry. cost last weekend. Because uh, after he... Uh, so that, uh, you know, said that in front of everyone at the podium, you know, the, the, the chorus of, Henry, you got done by a nine-year-old, rang out far and wide. But anyway, I digress. Joshua Cook leads back to the racing, Andrew. Does indeed. Six minutes to go. Charlie Page up there in second place. Really good run this for Charlie Page so far. Having a little look down the inside there. I think that was Albert, uh, was that Albert uh, Arthur Farrow, sorry. I'm going to do that a lot this year. Albert and Arthur, both racing, both for DHR. The way to tell them apart. Arthur is the 2-4, Albert is the 4-2. Right. And I was thinking that one of them is older than the other. No? I don't know. Well, one, 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 of, one of them must be. <laughs> uh, five minutes, 30 to go. And uh, stay, stabilising this race at the moment. Uh, Maxi Abrahart up to fifth place now. One of the Zip Factory team runners. A lot of confidence, I feel, in the Zip Factory team tent so far this weekend. I, had a, I was swarmed. Henry, I was swarmed, swarmed? yesterday by oh. Micromax drivers. Oh, it's a I'm having a chat with, with Chester Forks, who's out in this race as well, yes. uh, in 27th place. And I turned around, and there was uh, suddenly they'd multiplied. What, like, and yes. there were four of them. Yes. Um, and <laughs> like, I, asked, I thought, well, which of you are we going to win? Like, and they all put the hands Like on. guinea pigs during mating season, suddenly there's 27,000 of them. But no, that's really good, because they see the media, and they go towards them. Instead of running away from the camera mm -hmm. and the microphone and interview, because they're shy, they don't know what to say, they all want to be there. They all want to promote themselves. They all want to tell the story. They're not afraid of the camera. They're not afraid of the media. And that is so good, you know, for them in the future, because... You know, they don't realise that they see us at the paddock show, you know, messing about and they just, they relax. They, oh, it's only Henry, it's only Andrew, it's only Anthony, you're messing about, you know. They then, they don't think about the microphone that you're holding mm. and therefore they automatically relax more so that when they move on in their careers, if they move on in their careers, you know, when there's sponsors, you know, and things like that, they're automatically far more media savvy and comfortable. Now, oh, that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable for the number 47 cart and that would be... Uh, oh, uh, Alfie, Alfie Garrett, Green. and that's, oh, that's Dean Pahal. See, I cursed the commentator again. Sorry, Dean, but he was doing very well. Now he's not doing quite so well. Four minutes to go in this one into the second half on time. James Roots has just got past William Crombie for 16th place. So that's a, um, an improvement for Evolve Motorsports driver there. We're having a look at Max Jolly under attack from Alfie Garrett. Alfie Garrett having another go there with Sebastian Behrman also involved. Logan Rolf just behind in the number 32 as well. Uh, look out for Logan Rolf, who maybe officially, maybe unofficially, but it's on my stat sheet anyway. Does hold the uh, record for the most ice creams uh, ah, eaten I, in, I could believe that. in a in a in a British karting paddock within one weekend. Oh, excellent! I mean, seven, 77. Uh, three minutes and 15 to go. Uh, Henry's. Uh, see, we're in a, a different position here. Almost. Well, oh. I'll say a new position. It's more back to the old position of commentator here at Wilton Mill. Yes. And it's interacting with the paddock. Uh, three minutes to go in this one. Cook under pressure. Uh, no, that wasn't uh, Joshua Cook. It was the, the same team. No, it's Elliot Travis in fourth place uh, under pressure from Abrahart. They've got a bit of a gap to Max Jolly and the rest of them behind. Along the back straight, still a great opportunity for overtaking there. And I think we're going to see more of this this weekend with the changes later on. That's a lovely oh. bit of positioning by Luke Millward, who, having had that tough formation lap, fell back, is now marching back through the order. That is Millward up into ninth. And, uh, yes, and, and of course, the commentating on the heats is new. The heats is our opportunity 
to tell stories, to give you a little bit of uh, perspective. You know, when it comes to the finals, yes, it's going to be all about the on-track action, what you're looking at on the camera. That's what's important. During the heat, yes, we're not going to miss any overtakes, we're not going to miss anything, but it gives you, it gives us extra time as broadcasters to keep you up to date, to give you insight, background, stories into the drivers. So I won't be wittering all weekend, just today, a little bit. Two minutes Back remaining. To the racing. <laughs> Two minutes in this one to go. 2.2 seconds is the gap now for Joshua Cook. A uh, bit of a note there for Arthur Farrow, the number 24, as you can see on the uh, digi flag there on the screen is under investigation for something. We don't know what that is at, uh, at this stage, but has alerted the attention uh, of the officials down the inside. This is for second place. Good stuff again from uh, Austin Oman. As I say, he was looking really good one week ago and uh, is uh, marching through the order yet again, but it's going to be a little bit beyond him, I think, this one. 2.5 seconds to find with less than two minutes on the clock. No, Austin Oman, you know, one of the more, it sounds strange to say, now one of the more experienced mm. drivers in this class. There's the number 61 Whoa. of Maximilian Abrahart getting it all crossed up. And uh, that cutback section there, and uh, that is that Wilk. I, I, Ozias. O, uh, Ozias. I, I keep getting Ozias and Wilkins mixed up. And there's the number 37. But Ozias, that cutback section, that second curb, if you hit it at the wrong angle, it can sort of bounce the cart and change the direction of the cart very, very uh, quickly indeed. But yes, yes. But uh, he's okay. And uh, Logan Rolf. Uh, Ninth at the moment. Now, is that the amount of ice creams he ate in one weekend? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, something like that there. So it's Cook, three seconds at the road from Oman. Charlie Page. Uh, Charlie be doing a bit of racing out in the Middle East uh, early this year. Very impressive indeed. Elliot Travis, uh, Max Jolly. Max has some, some great uh, Instagram stuff, you know, where he, he talks around the race meeting. Again, great media practice. There he is, the number 14 cart, side by side between the 47 of Alfie Garrett and Elliot Travis. Out Garrett then gets shuffled to the outside of the RCE cart. Uh, now, you can see the two lines there. Watch that cart, the purple cart, the KR Sport. Look how much gr gr ground he lost because he tried to go too wide and it really does affect the exit speed of the car coming out of that new slower corner. It's one, it's, I've not driven it yet, but it's what's got me quite liking that uh, last section. It's got the drivers thinking about how to tackle that corner and uh, we're going to find lots out across the course of this weekend. That looked to be Alfie Mayer. Yes, it was in the number 15 going for an overtake into the top 10. We uh, are expired now on time. We're not on the final lap just yet. Uh, Joshua Cook still comfortable, 3.6 seconds clear of the rest of the order. This is the fight for fifth place. Elliot Travis at the front of it at the moment. Max Jolly's done really nicely in this race, Henry. It's fourth up to fourth place, a gain of three so far for Elliot Travis. Ooh. I think quite like the conditions yesterday when it was a bit slippery. Yes. Uh, but uh, today he's having to fight quite hard. Sebastian Behrman just behind him there in the number 37 in this fight for fifth. Uh, now we look as we start the final lap up front well here's the battle of the second between Oman and 11 page to the inside Charlie page wheel to wheel side by side across the top through Inkerman's good respectful racing there now will page duck to the inside going into breaking into Ashby's no he will try and size up a move not coming well he's going to try and undercut him coming out of Wilkins up the inside into Ogier's yeah, really good positioning there from Charlie Page. He's got to get the speed off of Ozzy's right, though, and he has done. Not many opportunities now for Omen to, for, to, uh, to have a go back, but for Joshua Cook, what a start to the weekend. Was fastest in timed uh, qualifying practice earlier on today. There's a continuing battle between Travis and Behrman there for fourth place. Cook takes the win by some five seconds clear of Page. Omen in third, Jolly fourth, Elliot Travis just holds on there to fifth place ahead of Sebastian Behrman in sixth. Alfie Garrett uh, in uh, in seventh place should give good credit to uh, Behrman's drive there. That was up eight positions. That's got to be one of the best, at least, in uh, in this race. Garrett in seventh, Rolf eighth, Eberhardt in ninth, and Alfie Mayer completes the top ten. Now, of course, I think it was just before the start of this race when I said, and of course, the Micromax package is really good with parity and evenness, and then we get a winner by five seconds. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that was a, that's a, a bit of a, a, an outlier, a misnomer. There's the rest of your finishing uh, 
results down there to Adam Galudi in 27, Chester Forks. And even though these drivers, okay, some of these drivers, they're competing in their first real big event of the yeah. year. So even though they're a lot further back than what they would hope to be, it's still getting them lots of good experience. Laps is key. And, and the, it's, a, it's, a hen, it's a healthy entry, but I think one of the really good things for these drivers' development, especially going forward into the, the British Car Championships proper later in the year, the multi round series, Everybody gets to the final in this one. You yes. don't have to worry about, oh, no, yeah, what no, if that, I don't make that top 34? You're going to be there. There's 31 of you. Yeah, no, that, that, is, that is very good. There's the uh, Travis Perkins-sponsored uh, number 61 car, the Maximilian Abrahart, the Zip Factory team. Oh, thumbs up. And, and again, this is something else. You know, excuse me while I witter, but, uh, you know, this is giving these... Uh, what other sport, what are the eight-year-old, nine-year-old sportsmen and women have cameras shoved in their faces, broadcast around the world, the minute they go out on the circuit and the minute that they come in, you know, which, which is incredible. I've got to say, really good to see support there for Charlie Page. I think that's one of the best races I've ever seen Charlie Page have. That's a, a tremendous don't, don't, effort. Don't, 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 uh, don't say that to him because he might take a, a, a leaf out of Diampa Hall's book. <laughs> there we go. Up next, race number seven, it's the start of the Honda Cadet Heats. Honda Cadets, the GX200 Formula class is out next. Let's have a look at the grid for this one. Kevin Ivanov for Zip Factory has pole position. Uh, Margaret Kovekis, a uh, very early driver in his career in, uh, in owner starts alongside on the front row. Keen Sullivan and Ed Spain on row two. Elliot Bourke and Ricky McIntosh start on row three. Andrew Sutherland and Luke McGall start on row number four. Jack Fulbrook Harmer and Ronnie Smart on row five. Ralphie Branscombe and Albie Smith on row six. Archie Cannon and last year's champion in, uh, in Honda Cadets yeah. starts on row seven. That, of course, being Ryan White. Harry Grant and Shay Hilton on row eight. Uh, Shaylan Secreton and J.M. Prakash start on row nine. 18 runners in the field. Uh, good to see an expanding GX200 class here, Henry. And uh, like we've just seen with the, uh, with the Micro Max, young set of drivers yep. raring to go for this old plate. And there, just going out of your screen, there was the number one plate cart, the Project One. Now, this will be a standing start, don't forget. Uh, Ryan White, using the number one. He was last year's Motorsport UK British Kart Champion. He is uh, running with, just now, in Cadet, it's just Project One. And then in, uh, in, in Mini Junior Micro, it's Project One and Jacks, mm. I believe. I stand to be corrected. Um, but yes, and, and uh, there's Dan Ashton. And today's colour of trainer is orange, orange and, and black. black. Orange is the new black. Mm. Ah, Ready to go racing then. Eyes on those lights for the first race of the weekend in Honda Cadet. Eight minutes plus one lap. Waiting on them and away they go. Oh, about stop there for uh, Quebec is early on. Didn't get the start right at all there. So Kevin Ivanov pulls away from pole position in the lead of this race. It's one of the ambitions that has come through. Might be Keith Sullivan who started on that other side uh, of the grid, I think it is, who's come through to lead in the early stages, but what happened there for Quebecis? Well, I mean, I, and one driver was sort of signalling in hope more than anything, please, we, do, we need a restart, we need a restart, but uh, uh, fortunately, that he does not decide. There's the number 45 car. Now, uh, Harry Grant trying to pick up uh, a few uh, places towards the back, and uh, into Ozias, there's the number 50 car. That's Kevin Ivanov. Kevin Ivanov. Again, now he's going to try and fight his way back up. See Kevin race a few times this year. Very impressive young man indeed. And uh, now he gets a chance to show his mettle, as it were. Yeah, and Zip Factory team had a 1-2 in Honda Cadets last year. So they definitely know how to do things here in the O-plate. End of lap one. Uh, it's Ed Spain who's come through. Apologies. It's the other one of the, uh, the Ambition Motorsports. Uh, runners at the front of the field who's come through. So Ed Spain leads from Ricky McIntosh. Margaris Kovekis there in third place. Very interested to see how Kovekis uh, gets on here because someone yep. else that I work with in the karting world would, would shame me for not mentioning that Margaris Kovekis this time last year was racing in the Club 100 Cadets Championship. Oh. So he's taking a step up on the uh, Motorsport well, UK karting pathways, gone from arrive and drive, and is now here 
that's what competing in the British Kart Championship. That, that's what it's all about. You know, you, you, you start off in rental karting, then you move up to Club 100, which is a kind of like a halfway step, you know, organised racing, but in, in there in Club 100 karts, and then you take the leap. It saves parents a lot of money because, you know, when kids are six, seven, eight years old, today I want to be a racing driver, tomorrow I want to be an astronaut. Yes. You know, it saves them from maybe investing a lot of money into something that gets used twice. And I've got to say, the graphics kit, it reminds you of, you know when uh, car manufacturers, they do a, like a test livery, but they don't want to see, they don't want anyone to see the lines of the car. So that, that's a, a good uh, graphics kit there for the number 31. There's the number 50, uh, 35 of uh, Quebecus rather, or uh, Luke McGall, I do apologise, I'll get it right at some point. Uh, Kevin Ivanov, fastest lap of the race, up into eighth position now. Uh, as usual, Ralphie Branscombe getting an awful lot of support online. Uh, Ralphie is 12th at the minute, and... Uh, Looking to build on the experience of last year, yes. third in the, uh, the, the 2020 3 O plate, which ran at a different time of year, if I remember correctly. Yes, it wasn't the at the start of the year like the road no. tax categories, it was a bit later on. Yeah, this, this, is the first, this is the first time the Honda O plate has joined the road tax O plate. I mean, it's, you know, we would have had 202 drivers, we've got 220 with the addition of Hondas, which makes such a busy paddock. There goes the 15 cart of uh, Margaris Kavekis uh, up into what is now. Uh, second, second position. Well, he lost second, and now he's regained second ahead of uh, the number 33 cart of uh, Ricky McIntosh. And uh, it's a very distinctive graphics kit as well uh, for Ricky McIntosh. Apologies for me. It was even off. who had the, uh, the weaker start, didn't he? From yeah, the, yeah. So he's row charging back up through the order. He's indeed now back up to fifth place. Ryan White is on the move as well. Took the championship last year. Uh, in Honda Cadet, the, uh, the Motorsport UK British Kart Champion, staying in. I think well, that's quite a good move. It's good to, to get some more experience, especially as the uh, as the field grows once again here yes. in Honda Cadet. Yes, uh, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, Honda Cadet. I would say starting class. It, it is, but I mean, it's a you know, it's a fantastic you know class of kart to race in. It teaches drivers so much, um, you know, about momentum, about being smooth about you know minimizing mistakes you know it, it's it's a, when when the racing is good like it is now and you can see the two project one carts uh, very briefly there ronnie smart and ryan white running line and stir when the racing is good it's excellent it really is i say in its old form some very illustrious names on the record of winners for the honda cadet o plate ollie bearman back in the day uh, jess hawkins as well three and a half minutes Alex Alban was never the Oak Plate champion. No, he was the Alex Alban British and champion. Tom Ingram yes. were both British champions. Well, Tom Ingram was a champion in Super 2, which shows how old Tom is nowadays. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was commentating on it many times at the time when Tom shows how old I am. But anyway, moving swiftly on, Ed Spade, three tenths of a second in front of Margaris Kavekis with Luke McGall, Ricky McIntosh. Oh, no, no longer Ricky McIntosh. Now that driver on your screen, the number 50 of uh, Kevin Ivanov has moved past McIntosh into P4. So the, uh, the pole sitter coming back here, showing that that pace, well, quite clearly because of the format with the three average laps, uh, single lap pace being converted into strong race pace as well. Two and a half minutes remaining. Here is your train for the lead then. Ed Spain still at the front of it. Kovac is there in second place, starting to put Ed Spain under a bit of pressure. Now, Luke McGall still there in third say though Henry right now perhaps too early to go for it but Quebec is going to have a little bit of a look oh. down the inside up towards Christmas corner no thinks better of it that's wise driving yes. that's really oh. good to see from Quebec is straight away that he realized yeah I could go for the lead at this point but it's just going to bring the likes of McGall Ivanov and others back into play I'll settle for my track position yeah. right now smart driving we've seen already in senior Rotax drivers not being as smart as that um, now, I was going to say, looking at uh, Kevin Ivanov, there he is in the number 50 car. Now, he's got Red Bull on his crash hammer, and I, the camera work is getting so good here now at, at these race meetings that I would be inclined, you know, don't put Red Bull on your crash hammer unless they're sponsoring you. So, you know, give him a ring or send him a text. It could, or it could, or it could be a... It could be a 
there was a Citroen C1s. I'm gonna I'll just get my turn to go off topic here. Citroen C1s, there's a team called Arable Racing. Right, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. I went with a little track to Oh, okay, fair enough. But, uh, uh, oh, God, I remember a Citroën Visa. Anyway, we're, we're, we're wittering. Someone will get upset on the live chat. And Spain leads with a minute to go. And uh, good work there from the number 50 of Evenos. So having had that uh, that problem at the start, which I'm sure they'll look at and uh, review back in the back of the awning, won't make that mistake again. It's come back through the order here. Still has a chance to win this race. Pace at the moment. Well, we're talking about lap records. Ah. This will definitely be Ooh. the lap record setting race <laughs> pace. Is that, Cadet, is that because Honda it's Cadet the first win, ever Honda Cadet race It's the Cadet first race ever here. Honda Cadet race Ooh. on this layout of Wilton Mill, of course. Right, well... We here last week. Well, of course, you know, someone's going to go down in the record books very shortly. Now, 30 seconds to go. Ivanov, what a recovery. Kevin Ivanov takes the lead away from Ed Spain, going across the top of Inkermans, and now Spain is having to defend from Quebecis, Quebecis squeezes in wide and Spain has dropped from first to third, maybe fourth, because around the outside goes Luke McGaw, Spain now fighting back. And you can see this is why they waited, because, you know, they waited to battle, because when you get held up in Honda, look at the advantage that Ivanov and Quebecis have now got. Just that half a lap of battling has really jettisoned the, the top four and, and through nothing that Ed Spain's done particularly wrong in this race, he's gone from fighting no. for the lead. He could be down in sixth place by the end of this in terms of how this final lap goes. We hope not for him, of course. And he continues to hold that, uh, that good pace. Could be good value for third in this one. But into play come the likes of Ryan White. There is the reigning champion uh, in the British Kart Championships for Honda Cadet through past the number 99 of Albie Smith. So that's White back up to fifth place. Trying to fight back there is Albie Smith down the hill. Keen Sullivan, uh, who was the other driver held up at the start, was, uh, was in the wrong place at the wrong time at the very start of uh, this one when Ivanov had uh, that problem getting away from the grid. is also back into play here. But for Kevin Ivanov, uh, fastest driver in timed qualifying, had that weak start, is going to come back through and take the first ever victory in Honda Cadet GX200 on this new layout round Wilton Mill and the fastest lap to boot, a win by eight tenths of a second ahead of Margaris Kovekis there. Ed Spain in third, Luke McGall does uh, get fourth place there ahead of Ryan White, Albie Smith, Keen Sullivan and Ronnie Smart in the top eight as well. The rest of the field coming across the line now and uh, it's great you asked the, the drivers are asked to do a pose, to do their victory pose. Uh, they have you know, for their for their grid shots. They have you know the smiling, a normal one, and then like a winner shot. You know for when they win, a case like that. And it's always good to see uh, you know what pose the drivers kind of come up with in their head. This is what I want to do when I win. And it's equally as good to see all 18 starters finish the race. Now, is that we halfway through the heats today, Mr. Mather? We are halfway through Ooh. indeed. Seven races down, seven to go. Been absolutely fantastic here so far. You're watching live coverage of the 2024 Vera Tools British Kart Championships. It is the 2024 British Open Championship, the O plates for Honda Cadet and uh, Rotax as well. Andrew Mather and Henry Baudet on commentary duties for you throughout the whole weekend. Uh, great oh. to be bringing you coverage here on the Saturday. Uh, more to come this afternoon. Another seven races. We'll be kicking it off with the second appearance of uh, oh, no, Minimax no. for this weekend. As on to the way which yeah. goes Quebecis. Jake Designs has uh, done their best impression of a karting zebra mm. with that graphics kit. Uh, Ed Spain on to the way bridge there as well. So as I say, groups A and C from time to qualifying earlier on uh, today out next. If you want to get any more of the uh, the stats Ooh, and the results, yes, uh, head across to the British Kart Championships website. Right. The live timing uh, brought to you by Motorsport Timing UK. Okay, Ian Rogers and the whole team there. Yes, uh, thank you, Ian. Every single result uh, you can see on there and peruse at your leisure. Uh, no, I love a good perusal. Uh, how everyone's getting on. But you know what uh, else? Is that the, those, those smart people and the live chat, they put yes. a link. You can tell now it's a link because go. it's in blue. Now, all I know is that I, that's the end of my technical knowledge. It's in blue. So if you're watching, well, of course you're watching. Or else you're, of course you're watching. <laughs> uh, look, go to the, the, there's a link there that will take you to all 
uh, the start times, which people yep. are very concerned with. I don't know why you're just not watching the whole program. Don't flit away, come back, stay and watch it all. But uh, start times, results, and other uh, bits of information. Statistics. Like sticks, sticks. Next up, it, well, next up will be another race, but before then, we are going to go and speak to some of our Honda Cadet drivers who are down the pits with Nicole Sutherland. So we're with race winner Kevin. Kevin, we saw you start on pole and then you lost the race lead halfway through the race, came back for the win. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? So um, there was no green flag, so everyone went and there was no green flag, so I obviously didn't know what to do, so everyone went and I just sent it and regained conditions and just got to first again. And are you feeling confident for the rest of the weekend? Do you think you can get some more wins in there? Yeah, 100%. Great. Thanks very much, Kevin. Good luck for the rest of your weekend. Thank you. We'll go back up to the comms box with Henry and Am Andrew. Thank you very much, Nicole. Uh, rolling out for the next race. Second appearance uh, for Minimax 950, Groups A and C. They're out next. Here we go then for Groups A and C. For everyone on the odd side of the road, this is their first race. On the other side, it's their second race. Finley Lines has pole position. Kian Bernard, the FIA Academy representative for 2024, is alongside on the front row. Luca Holmes, Balak and Jack Collinson on row two. Blair Smith in the number eight. And Emerson and McAndrew Irwin uh, on row number three. Ilya Veliko and Charlie King are on row four. Zach Starbuck and Jaime Ambrose on row five. Max Gilman and Josh Cormack on row six. Joshua Griffin and Harry Taylor on row seven. Jensen Chalk and Theo Bradshaw go from row eight. Alfie Ward and Miles Burton on row nine. Uh, Daniel Wisnowskis and Devin Taylor complete the top 20. Daniel Minto and Benjamin Lawn start on row 11. Jensen Sale and Fenton Stoneman start on row 12. Adam Turchek and Connor Winfield on row 13. Akil Giannone and Adam Zioditis start on row 14. David Hyans and Louis Radcliffe start on row 15. And Maxi Braskov uh, completes the 31 runners in this oh, one. Oh dear, and That's there a is a problem. A and I hope that there's going to be no nose cones of that. That's... Uh, not ideal. I hope you're watching in Vilnius because you've got five Lithuanians in this race alone. And uh, off we go into turn number one. It's a good start from Finley Lines, the uh, uh, driver, the bright green crash helmet. He's been doing an awful lot of winning at the start of this year as Finley Lines really marked himself out. We talked about Albi Friend, uh, you know, being the, the driver that is all conquering in Minimax. Well, Finley Lines is going to have something to say about that. The Maximum Motorsports uh, sponsored driver and he's coming up through the uh, the ranks of karting. He was a Honda cadet that he was, you know, now racing uh, Mini Max and uh, with the Synergy Factory team. He's got the Corley Austin mechanic for him and uh, big things in uh, the future for Finley Lines and he's leading comfortably. He's learning how to win. That's the key for Finley Lines this year. His speed has, has never been in doubt, but it was always a case of, I'm fast, but at some point in a race, I'll put myself in the wrong position and take myself out of a chance to win. Now, oh dear, there's take, speaking of taking themselves out of a chance of victory, that is uh, Achille Giannone, uh, one of those two drivers. And uh, Euoditis as well, Adam Euoditis for M Sport in the number 99. Hopefully they'll be able to get going again and back into the race to at least score some points. They, uh, sadly, of course, will not be in contention for the race victory. Here are drivers in contention well, uh, yes. for some good points here. That is the number 33. That is Emerson McAndrew uh, Yeun coming back through the order. Micromax champion from 2023 on the move. Yes, and uh, he, of course, this is the second heat. So, uh, for Kian Bernard, the driver to start on the outside row of the grid, that's Group A. It's their second heat race. And the drivers on the inside, so Lines, Holmes, Ballack, Blair Smith, the one Blair Smith, it's their first race. So, Emerson McAndrew Uren, who didn't have a great opening heat, has now got to be ultra aggressive to try and maximize his points in this race to give him a half decent start for the super heat. There's the newly liveried number 34 M Sport cart of Ilya uh, Veliko. Uh, like I said, one of uh, a, a quintet of Lithuanians, so they say. 
you know, the streets of Vilnius are empty because they're all watching Alpha Live. Oh, indeed. Uh, Ilya well, Maliko, another, of them are. Uh, another driver who's come through the karting pathway, has experience on Rotax machinery uh, before in a Club 100 capacity. Now racing here on his own machine, doing very nicely indeed. Five minutes and 20 to go. Lines, Holmes, Ballack, Smith, Ber Bernard, Makanji Uren there in the top five. Who's coming through the field? Jensen Chalk's not having a bad run, Henry. He's up to... Uh, 11th place, that's a gain uh, of four. Adam Turacek, Adam Turacek, who had a spin in the first race, also yes. coming back through the order, is up to 17th, a gain of eight. Well, I know Jensen Chalk's mum is here, and she's not the greatest watcher. She's one of ah. the very, very nervous mums. It's okay, Cathy, you can now look, because they're all single file. You've got, Jensen's got through the first corner, and he's now having a race, and he's gaining a few positions. So you can, uh, you can stop hiding and actually watch for a couple of laps, at least. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Philly Lines extend his advantage to just one second of 49.09. 49.09, uh, that is not far off the pace that we saw from Edward Haynes in the A final last week. That's currently the lap record, three wide, nearly into Christmas Corner. Through the middle goes Charlie King there in the number 74. Nice move there for eighth place. I've got to say that uh, as Finley Lines gets closer and closer to a track record, because Finley is the son of ex-British touring car driver, uh, now TCR uh, UK Championship organiser Stuart Lines, um, and that would be, you know, lap records is not something that the Lines family are familiar with until Finley came along in racing. Sorry, Stuart. I'm only joking. Second half of the race then on time. Lines leads by a second clear of Holmes Ballack, Blair Smith, uh, number eight seed from last year's Minimax competitions in the uh, in the Vera Tools British Kart Championships. Good to see there's a, a decent number of drivers who've uh, stayed in Minimax for uh, for 2024. Yeah, so this uh, is Blair, yeah, Blair Smith being uh, and Luca Holmes Ballack uh, amongst them. Now, just to further confuse us, Henry, yes. as we mentioned, we have two two Blair Smiths yes. in this category. Uh, they're both from the wonderful part of the world in Scotland. Yes. They're both from Lark uh, Race, their home Lark, Hall. Lark Hall. Yes. So at the moment, I th I've got this as, this is the Blair Smith from Stonehouse. Right. As opposed to the Blair Smith from Coatbridge. Okay, because they both, uh, they both raced at Lark Hall in last year's British yep. Champ. Yes, which was, uh, but now, Emerson McAndrew Uren, hot on the heels of Kean Bernard. Now, we've got three minutes to go. Does he push? Does he try and work with Kean Bernard? Or does he think, no, I've got to go and get up the road? because that's a three and a half second lead. I'm not sure that on his own, McAndrew Uren could catch it. Oh, here's a good battle. Side by side, uh, the inside, that's uh, Tony Motor Sport Kart. Oh, and the 55, oh, and that is the yeah. number 55 over the grass. Uh, Jaim Ambrose uh, getting shown the uh, exit there. Oh, was that the number 53? Yeah, it was the 55 and the 53 in close contention, Harry Taylor just behind Ambrose now. That very brightly liveried number 12 car, that is the, uh, that's Adam uh, Turek, a privateer driver. Now, it says on the entry list, he's on a Paralin, but that looks awfully Alonso. No, that's just a privateer, so it is a Paralin. Yeah. I thought it was an Alonso-ish. An FA car, yeah. An FA car graphics kit, but it's not. It's his own privateer livery. So uh, good to see the privateer is still race through that sack starbuck down yes. the inside of jack collinson starbuck up to sixth place i uh, had a chat to his dad earlier on this morning one of the drivers uh oh, parents very much looking at the uh, the new final corner as a, as a positive oh, oh a bit of contact there the, the bit of a mess down into uh, uh, uh ashby corner three into one simply did not go no uh i there was a drive there was a driver trying to make it three wide going up the inside uh, couldn't quite see who it was and of course the driver that was sandwiched in the middle was the aforementioned privateer uh, Adam Turek uh, sorry is that Tur Turacek Tur Turacek I do apologise uh, uh, let's have a look we'll look to see where Turacek has come round it was Theo Brad now someone in the live chat was saying Theo Bradshaw deserves uh, a bit of good fortune he's not got it in this race uh, so it was Turacek Bradshaw and I think it was possibly okay. Josh Cormack. Ah, uh, yeah, Josh Cormack. Who were the, uh, who were the three into one? Don't go. I was going to say. I'm not sure. We, we Alpha Live do have action replays. I'm not sure we got them this weekend. Yeah. Or we might have them this weekend. But uh, 
we'll, we'll queue up a couple of those later on. We'll, we'll build up to things, but that's just another little uh, bow in our arrow uh, for later in the weekend to show you all. But uh, there is Blair Smith. Now, this is Stone no, Stonehouse? Stonebridge. Stonehouse, Sto yes. Stonehouse, Blair Smith. This is going to get awfully confusing. So number eight is Stonehouse Smith. The Synergy one. The syn Stonehouse Synergy Smith. It's probably Smith. an easier way of doing yes. it. Yes. And the other Blair Smith is from? Which, uh, lo which lovely part of Scotland? Part of Scotland, uh, Coatbridge. Pardon? Coatbridge. Coatbridge. I thought you said Cowbridge then. I thought I live in Cowbridge. Right, OK. We'll find out. Uh, well, Coatbridge Smith. Uh, get your Coatbridge Smith. And um, Stonehouse Smith. But... Oh, the number 55. Ah, that's Haim Ambrose again, getting it all crossed up, coming into uh, Ashby's, but managed to hold on. Uh, number 34, Ilya Veliko, has, uh, has caught the attention of the officials. You can see that there with the investigation race control notice. We are on the final lap, by the way. Finley Lines has had a trouble-free run. It's looking really good so far in this one. Driver's going on to that final lap now. There is your race leader coming down the hill in a moment uh, through to Ashby, uh, Ashby Hairpin. And this has been a very good performance from Finley Lines to open up his account. Here's a battle for second place. Luca Holmes Ballack and Blair Smith fighting for that one. Luca Holmes Ballack doing really well right now to hold uh, on to this position. Had a good run last year in Micro Max, finished third in the O plates 12 months ago. It's going to be a factor here now in Mini Max. Is there going to be a switch back on there for Blair Smith? No, well defended by Luca Holmes Ballack to the inside. But it's Finley Lines who takes victory in the second heat for Mini Max 950. Luca Holmes Ballack P2. Blair Smith continuing that strong form from 2023, finishes eighth. Kean Bernard. That's more like it for this year's FIA Academy representative for the United Kingdom in P4. Emerson McAndrew, uh, Ewan as well, needed that result. Henry, yes, he after did. a difficult first race, gets top five in heat two. Yes, indeed. Zach Starbuck, Jensen Chalk, Jack Collison, Josh Griffin, Charlie King, Max Gilman and the rest. Uh, Alfie Ward. Uh, good to see Alfie. Uh, last time I saw Alfie was racing out in Dubai for the brand racing team. Um, and again, because there's a relationship with a lot of these teams, you know, they, they personnel go back and forth across the world. It allows these drivers to literally pack up, bring it, put your race suit and your helmet, get on a plane, and then there's a there's a cart and a package and a team waiting for you. It helps. It does help. Uh, oh, this first sight of Dan Parker on our screens there. Um, here we go. Okay, Telef mobile phone of doom. Finley lines a okay. Luke Holmes Ballack, A OK. Emerson McAndrew Uren. A OK. Yeah, now, uh, Stonehouse Smith, A OK. Jensen Chalk, A OK. Here we go. And uh, into the audience. Again, that's the most important thing of all to see the, uh, the drivers, the handshake between the drivers uh, when they come in. And, uh, an impressive performance then, I thought, Finley, uh, from Finley, Finley Lines. Yeah, Just Finley, Lines Finley Lines has now done, this is an absolute 100% fact, and you know I only speak facts, Finley Lines done more winners' interviews in the last three months mm -hmm. than his dad did in his entire racing career. Yes. There you go. Fact. Fact. Hard facts. Uh, oh. More hard facts uh, Hi, to come Stuart. shortly. Uh, end of race number eight on our schedule. For, uh, six more. Sorry to go. We'll be going back to uh, Junior Rotax shortly for another two heats. Uh, group C versus D and A versus E. And uh, after that as well, another two from Senior Rotax and another appearance. The third appearance in the heats portion of this year's O-Plate for Minimax 950 with the penultimate race uh, between A and B groups later on. For now, though, let's head uh, once again down to Park Ferme and to Nicole Sutherland. So Finley Hines, race winner there, lights to flag uh, win, as well as a purple lap on your last purple lap on your last lap. Can you just explain to us what what the race was like? I mean, like it was pretty easy to affair. I just at the start I went into a bit of a bog. I thank by my teammate who pushed me a bit at the start to get my engine like back going. Uh, but apart from that, I just uh, dropped my gear and disappeared. So you think you can do the same again for the rest of the weekend? Hopefully, but I'm feeling very confident. 
Yeah, very best of luck. We'll just go to the rest of the pit lane and go and speak with Emerson McAndrew Urin, who is in a great battle with one of his competitors. Emerson, just wondering if we can grab you for a quick interview. You had a great battle going on there with Kian Bernard. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, it was a great race. Um, yeah, uh, in the last couple of laps, me and Kian were obviously battling it out. And on the last lap, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, coming down the hill, I was on the outside and he's just run me out. I don't know really know why, because like he could have lost a place to his teammate, but still all right. We still got okay finish and we just have to keep trying to do better tomorrow. Well, very best of luck to you, Emerson. We'll throw back up to the comms box for uh, the next Junior Rotax race, but before, just a short message from our partners. Getting ready then for the next race out on circuit. Race number nine here for the Saturday of the 2024 British O-Plates. Junior Rotax and groups C and D are out next. Here's a grid then for this next heat. Jacob Ashcroft starts on pole position. Alongside on the front row is Harry Bartle. Jacob Jukes and Joshua Smith start on row two. And then William Antrobos and Aidan Mitchell start on row three. Luca Mongi and Adam Wooden are next. Then Jack Wax, Dole Justin Coham, uh, Jack Bate, Calafasa, Cameron Nielsen, Noah Barham, Zach Turner. They're all there. Have a look at motorsport-timing.co.uk for the full grid. Over to you, Andrew, by the start. Eight minutes plus one lap on the board yet again. And through into turn one we go then. Jacob Ashcroft, good start. Had uh, some strong race pace here last week in the club meeting. Didn't have the best of luck to uh, through to the final. He's on good uh, a good start here in this next heat, looking to get some good points on the board. Down into Ashby to go for the first time. Big defensive move from the number 35, but under attack there. That's Harry Bartle for Strawberry Racing in the 73, going through into second place. Yes, Harry Bartle, of course, who was at the podium at the Rotax Grand Finals in 2022. Uh, at Portimao and uh, moved across from X30 last year, back in the Rotax fold this year. Somebody going very wide, that's a KR, uh, KR Sport uh, driver uh, running very wide. Good to see. And oh, uh, that's three drivers. There's uh, an Xperit chassis, which is a Sam Pollock racing machine. I think that would be, uh, we'll have a check next time by, it's Ayman Bansal, Eli Baden, and possibly Sebastian Lush. Uh, Naomi Garcia has also had a problem. She's down at the back of the field in the number 97. She was the KR Sport driver uh, getting involved. The young girl from Trinidad. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Cindy and Loosh in trouble there. Loosh out of the race. Yes. Uh, oh. Not even seeing the end of lap oh. number one. Not good news for drivers where there is a cutoff, no, of course, yes. in Junior Rotax. Once we get towards the finals tomorrow, only the top 34 of the 67 or 60 odd entries or so 65. who have uh, 65. 65 uh, entries, incredible. Uh, a quick hello to Eddie Stewart Racing on mm. the live chat. Uh, wishing good luck to Rory Armstrong and Jacob Ashcroft, his former sparring partners from the Daniel Ricciardo series. Here's a worrying thing. Eddie Stewart is a very, very talented young commentator. You'll Indeed. be all right. I'm already nervous. <laughs> uh, I'm, six, I've got one foot out the door already. I've only just got back in. Uh, right. Six minutes to go in this one on the attack. That is one of the pro trains, is it not? Yes, it is. Number 56 of Shane Chandaria. Uh, ah. That'll be up into the top 10 for Shane. Past Joel Dixon Cohen. I uh, had a brief chat with Shane yesterday. He seemed content, happy with his work in those tricky conditions through free practice yesterday and raring to go uh, now, for things in the heats. Shane's from Kenya. So he's mm. come over here for, he comes over here from Kenya. He raced, I believe, in the FIA Motorsport Games representing Kenya. Did a round or two of the British Championship last year. Uh, William Antrobus 
There he is in the number 57 car, just going through Christmas Corner, has set the fastest lap of the race as he tries to chase down Jacob Ashcroft. So, Ashcroft, and, and again, last year, Cole Denham, Jacob Ashcroft, and Albie Friends, absolute ambassadors for the sport, especially in Minimax. Uh, they've sort of gone their different ways mm. this year. Uh, Denham is racing uh, in, racing in Europe. Europe. Yep. Uh, I mean, as in, he's, so does Ashcroft in the, in the Rotax Euro Trophy as uh, the number 92 there. That's uh, learning the hand signals quickly. Jack West. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, those, that trio of drivers will not meet again on the oh. circuit for some time. Hello. And uh, a close moment there between the 22 and the 56. That's uh, Barham and Chandaria losing out possibly to... Joel Dixon Cohen as they came over start finish. Four and a half minutes to go. What is the gap looking like at the front? It's coming down, you know. It's yes. down to uh, less than three quarters of a second. Ah, oh, there's number 55, Eli Baden. And the cart. Oh, and there's Shane Chandaria. Uh, getting a little bit uh, off agricultural. And uh, going on, going on a, well, I mean... You can go on. A, I mean, you've got the West Midland Safari Park. He was going on a little safari there, uh, as was the Kenyan. Now, oh, side by side, and that's just that is one of the CRGs. Is that a, no? Is it the Bradley Shepherd racing? So there's another team that's cropped up with orange and black uh, graphics on their car, just to upset me. And uh, I think that was the Bradley Shepherd racing car. Henry Harry Hurst Grover in the number 24 cart. He's one of the X-Cart drivers. Uh, really happy to see the X-Cart. Oh, and there's the number 92 of Jack West getting involved again. And that would be... Now, we talked about the orange and black graphics kits, the Bradley Shepherd racing team. And that is Callum Foster. Unfortunately, that is not the way that the Bradley Shepherd racing wanted to get a nice close-up of their graphics kit. Yeah, and Callum Foster had a tough time in the first race, a tough time here in the second and uh, that is not good news. Harry Bartle has got good news, though. New fastest lap of the heat so far, 46.61. Really good pace there from Bartle. As uh, Who's that having a little bit of trouble going through uh, the final chicane? Three minutes remaining on the... What was it? Eric Brinsmith, who's lost a few positions in this race, is, uh, is down to 17th place. Yes, it was. He's lost uh, around five places that time around, did, uh, did the Welsh driver. Two minutes and 45 remaining. This is the battle uh, involving West, Baker and Baker. That is not a law firm, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is the fight for 11th place. Oh, that's, I've spent... I spent two hours commentating with Andrew Mather, and he just said something funnier than Anthony Jordan managed in four years. <laughs> you can stay. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ashcroft, six tenths of a second ahead of Antrobus. This battle on your screen, Antrobus and Bartle. Then a long gap to Jacob Dukes, Adam Woodham. Going through the bottom of your screen there, that's Nelson and Joshua Smith. Then it's Aidan Mitchell uh, filing our way back. This is the midfield pack. Uh, further back, right at the back of the field, in 23rd place, watch out if we can for the number 97, KR Sports Cart. Uh, it's a bit further back from this group. We haven't seen her yet, but we're going to be seeing a lot more of her. Uh, not necessarily this weekend, but in the years to come. Naomi Garcia, a very, very, very talented young lady from Trinidad. Uh, she had an off at the start of the race. That's why she's down at the back of the field. She was involved in that incident earlier on that uh, eliminated uh, Sebastian Lush and Omar Cindy. Uh, but yes, as I said, she was almost at the podium at the Scusa Winter Series at Homestead in Miami in what was wet conditions. Now, in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. and I, I've managed to drive from Trinidad and Tobago in the past, they do not race in the rain. Because it's simply when it rains in Trinidad, the drainage isn't great, ah, and, and lake. You, you go from you need power boats. Yes. Uh, so and of course it started raining when they were on slick tyres at Homestead, and Naomi Garcia still nearly put it on the podium. Anyway, we digress even further. Ashcroft still leads. Minute to go. This is with attainment. Tomorrow is entertainment. Don't forget. Uh, yeah, the gap is coming down again. Yes. Still, it's put down to 0.5 and three, uh, 0.53 of a second. Antrobus and Bartle. Bartle, another new fastest lap of the heat, and he's quite content right now to just sit there behind uh, the Sam Pollock racing number 57. Because they've still got a chance here with the time remaining on the clock. Lead is coming down and through Ashby now. We can tell by our uh, tracking. As here is uh, 
This is Nelson and Wooden Smith, fifth, sixth, seventh at the moment. Don't think they're really going to have enough pace or well, time, really, to catch up to Jacob Jukes, who's having a good run there in fourth place. This is the fight for the lead. That is lot, a lot less oh, than yes. half a second now, as Antrobus has picked the pace up and closed into, what yes. would you say, Henry? A, a, About a two cart, cart lengths. Yeah, two cart lengths here. We're going to go. This oh, is going to be close on the line. Yeah, we're going to go around again. Yeah, two that, more laps. That's the battle for fifth, sixth and seventh. Uh, that's the battle for the race lead. Ah, which is apologies. Still, uh, no, 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 it's quite, it's quite all right, Anthony. <laughs> 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 Only joking. No, uh, Ashcroft still leads by, and I've got to say, Jacob Ashcroft using my old race number. Bless Indeed. him, 82. If you, look, if you look back at the late 1990s, it was a really dashing fast run. Oh, down oh, the hello. inside, that Bartle on dashing. Antrobus has decided now is the time to go. Has he got too much to do, though, to close up to Ashcroft on this last lap? 0.9 of a second through the new final chicane. Jacob Ashcroft looking calm at the wheel of his DHR number 82. There is the last lap board. There is the change confirmed for second place. And a new fastest lap of the race. I, I felt that might be coming from Jacob yeah. Ashcroft, that he's just been pacing this race nicely, not letting himself fall into the clutches of no, Bartle and Antrobus holding that pace back for later in the race. Oh, and uh, Bartle having to defend. Antrobus sending one up the inside into Ashby's. He stands on the anchors, gets the position. Bartle looks up back inside the Wilkins, wheel to wheel, up over the kerb. Great move. There was about an inch between the two sets of rear tyres there, but both drivers managed to get through without making contact. Now Bartle has to defend. The good news for Bartle is he's got one fewer uh, corners to defend in terms of an overtake because even though there's an extra corner it's virtually impossible to pass uh, the, that final the new final corner as the checkered flag comes out and Jacob Ashcroft takes the win the key thing is there is that when you're leading a race when you're young what's the first as you get closer and closer to the end of the race what starts going through your mind nerves, nerves. and then you back up or you make yep. mistakes Ashcroft is now yeah you know in that pressure situation, he simply goes quicker and sets yeah. fast lap the race. That's it a really is. significant development of every young driver. It's one of those, wasn't it? Jackie Stewart back in the day has said what a great skill is winning a race as slowly as possible. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. In reserve. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, Alan, so Alan set a new, was another one. Uh, new lap record oh, there for Barry Jacob Ashcroft. Ashcroft. Official, official He's word. He's improved it. Barry Ashcroft said if Jacob Ashcroft set a new lap record, he would give him £100. There we go. That's an 100 pound lap. 46. But he actually set the record twice in that race. Is that oh, 200, 200 pounds? pounds for Jacob Ashcroft, a double lap record holder. Barry Ashcroft, what a generous guy. <laughs> what a wonderful man he is there, giving his son 200 pounds for breaking the lap record twice in one race. He'll thank us for that. All right, so <laughs> 2.72 seconds was the gap for Ashcroft ahead of Bartle. William Antrobus third, Jacob Jukes in fourth, Cameron Nelson fifth as the junior Rotax drivers come back in. There is one more appearance for junior Rotax today. It'll be groups B and C uh, racing at 5.30 local time here in the UK uh, before we have the Super Heats tomorrow. And we should remember, I'm yes, going to say it now. I, I, public, I, I, I was uh, going to say yeah. exactly the same thing. Clocks change tonight, mm. ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we're all going to lose an hour of sleep, but it's OK, because we're going to be woken up by fantastic action here for the O-Plate at Wilton Mill. I need all the beauty sleep I can get. I tell you, so uh, do, do remember that shocking, with, uh, with even worse. Uh, Ashcroft and Bartle, Antrobus, Dukes, Nelson in the top five. Wooden, Joshua Smith, Aidan Mitchell, Joel Dixon Cohen, and Noah Barham in the top ten. Ah. Good try from Benjamin Baker. Uh, there's the number 97. So yes. that's the first time in the UK uh, running with the KR Sport team, and uh, you know it'll be great. I mean, we, she. Oh, oh, oh! Hang on, the. That is Eric, is Eric, Eric. Oh, Eric Bryn Smith. Eric Bryn. Bryn. But, uh, yes, we'll uh, head oh, down yes. to Park Ferme once again. I believe Nicole Sutherland has race winner, Jacob Ashcroft. £200 richer, amazing. Junior Rotax heat winner number 82, Jacob Ashcroft. Jacob, you're one of the younger drivers in this grid this year. You've just recently moved up from a mini class. How have you found the change? Um, I found the change quite difficult at the start and then after um, a lot of practicing I got used to junior and found a lot of speed. Yeah, that's great. And you had a big win recently out in Spain. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, in Campelos Winter Cup um, I managed to win 
um, in Spain by beating Tom Strelle from Latvia and it was a really good win for my career and yeah. Yeah, that's great. And what are your expectations and your goals for the rest of the year? Well, I want to win as many races as possible, hopefully a few championships and get to the world finals in junior this year. That's great. We'll speak to you a bit later on, probably, Jacob. Uh, we'll throw back up to Henry and Andrew, uh, but before we'll hear a little bit from our sponsors. Thank you very much, Nicole. Thank you for uh, supporters ever from the, uh, the championship sponsors. Uh, getting for the next, ready for the next race. Got ahead of myself earlier because out on circuit now it's Junior Rotax Groups uh, B and sorry A and E. Here is your grid for it: Thomas Min Spearing and Lewis Goff on the front row, Kenzo Craig and Lucas Blount on row two, Albie Lapper and Charlie Neve on row three. Zach Green, Kai Clark, Aris Majewski's Charlie Cox round out your top ten with Finley Buck and Kaksmar Tomalevsky rounding out your first six rows of the group. Hugh Moulton and Victor Hansen go from row seven, Emily Cotty and Ryan Gandor go from row eight, Owen Neve and Matteo Palazzo start on row nine. William Archer, Rory Armstrong after his incident in the first race, John Richardson, Isabella Stanswell, Wilson hopes she's okay, Vlad Tomenchuk and Elliot Surtees. And completing the 25 runners in this one, Jake Grufferty for Hunter Motorsport. And I'm just and checking, yes, both Armstrong and Isabella Stansmore Wilson are really? out there uh, after their respective issues in race number one. Good stuff indeed. Drivers will use the old layouts here to, uh, to get ready for the start of this one. And once again, it'll be eight laps plus one lap for Junior Rotax. Here we go then, race 10, heat number four for the juniors. And no, we're going to go around again, Henry, for another formation lap. Now, of course, so this would be, is this the last heat for the juniors today? Uh, yes? Last but one. Last but they're, one, they're okay. The so intermediate available. classifications. Now, this at the moment, so Thomas Min, Thomas Min Spearing, he won the opening heat race. Yep. Ashcroft, so he's got zero points. Ashcroft has got zero points, and Lewis Goff has got zero points. You get zero points. This is not championship points. This is just heat points. You get zero points for a win, mm -hmm. a heat win in karting. Two points coming second, three points coming third, and so on and so on. Uh, no. So at the moment, a three-way tie with Nil Poir, which is good, because this is not Eurovision, for Thomas Vinspearing, Jacob Ashcroft, and Lewis Goff. Mm -hmm. Harrison Whitcomb has two points. That's good. And three, toi, three for Wavy Welsh, toi, for, uh, uh, for Freeman, uh, Freeman Antrobus, and then Bartle and Dukes on four. Ready then for the second run through the start line. Let's see if we're good for a green light in this one. The pace rising. Do the lights go green? No, no. they do not. They stay with the flashing. No. Amber light. If anyone's wondering why, okay, so it, there's, there's obviously certain rules and regulations with start the encarting. Number one, the pace cannot be too quick. You can't just take it, uh, and of course, with this slow last corner, there will be a line that well, the drivers will have been told, oh dear, Ooh. and that would be the number 53 cart of Zach, Zach Green. Green in trouble. Um, now, there will be a line that the, the race directors will have told the drivers, I do not want you accelerating until you pass this line. And even then, you bring the speed up gradually. You cannot just come out of the final corner and boot it, because that would then disadvantage the drivers at the back of the grid. And also, it makes them... The last thing you want is for 30, I mean, 25 drivers, 34 in the final, heading off into turn one, into crook and oblivion, uh, 
it's cooked in oblivion, isn't it? Uh, a, a flat chat side by side. And you want that parity as well, yes. but across the front row as well. That's uh, that's what Nigel Edwards and his team out there on circuit will be looking for. Uh, drivers need to get this right though, because they're oh, oh now no. Kenta Craigie's out. Oh. And we are good to go this time. Green lights, eight minutes begin. And, uh, well, already we've lost two of the potential front runners in this one. Thomas Minspearing heads up to Christmas Corner. Can he get a second heat win of the day? Oh, that's going to be a big a slide 72. for the number 72. That's Majowskis. Aris Majowskis did very well there to hold on to that slide. He has lost position, but he's still in the race. Now, leading the race, the Argenti Motorsport number... 10 of Thomas Bin Spearing. There were three Argenti carts starting in the top eight. Two of them went out before the start. Uh, so Thomas Bin Spearing is uh, somewhat nervously leading this race, I would imagine. With another one of the Argentis is coming into the pl into play though. Emily Cotty has had a very good start in the number yes. 42. There is Kenzo oh. Craigie. At just at the point where it felt like, you know, Last year, there were so many ups, but also downs for well, Kenza Crazy, looking for that consistency. He's had a really good run in Europe the last few yep. weeks, but it's just not how he would have wanted to start his O-plate this weekend. You know, these are kids, and you hate to say the word pressure, but last, I mean, obviously, he is part of the uh, Mercedes Formula One Young Driver program. Last year, it was a learning year. Everyone knew that. He was straight out of Honda uh, Cadet into Junior Rotax, so it was like this year now, there is a little bit of added pressure mm. on him. Whether, whether anyone would miss it or not, there is. You, you know, he has to perform. Uh, he's been performing, but bad luck cannot... Just keeps finding him. Cannot, yeah, cannot keep finding him, sadly. So six and a half minutes to go. Then end of lap number two, spearing from Goff, Blanford, Lapper, Clark. That is your top five on the move. Kasper Tomalewski is up to seventh place. A gain of five. Victor Hansen has also gained five so far in this one. Needs a good run for Strawberry Racing here. Uh, is up to ninth place with that move past Hugh Moulton on the previous lap. Uh, quick sight there of Isabella Stansmore Wilson in number 88. Good to see Isabella back out there after uh, the incident in yes. uh, earlier on this afternoon. But back at the front of the order, Henry. Spearing and Goff, two drivers at the moment, both well, started this race, both on zero points. Both have a race win, but such is yep. the way this system works. They can't or both stay on zero points at the end of this one. No, but uh, but again, a first and a second, they're, they're being very, very smart at the moment. Lucas Blanford, really impressive uh, from Lucas Blanford. He started third, driving for the Ultimate R team. That's uh, Matty and Ben Hingley's team. Uh, ben Hingley was here last weekend uh, with a couple of drivers, mm -hmm. uh, getting experience in the circuit. Matty, younger brother... Uh, was at Glanagorse, his home track with a bunch of other drivers uh, in the Ultimate R team. And I have to say, uh, very, very impressive. Uh, the one, one driver there for, for the Ultimate R team took a win, Daniel Hartley. Uh, there's another name, mm. a junior driver. And it's a shame that he's not out here because I think that even though he doesn't compete regularly in the British Championship, I think Daniel Hartley is definitely a driver who could compete at this level. And uh, yeah, the Ultimate R team, you know, again, growing as a team they're part of that sort of and i hate using this but i'm going to use it it's that second tier of teams mm. uh you know second third tier of teams that are just trying to break in to become one of the powerhouses and when i say powerhouses i'm talking strawberry dan holland kr and then coles probably you know the the, the, the big four as it were like a football record well i'm going to upset everyone else to pad it now that i haven't mentioned but it's just fact you know and i love them all but there's that yeah you know there is, there is that establishment, and then, you know, this is the next group of teams that are trying to get that one winning driver to get up there to Argenti have done it. Argenti yep. have done it, of course, with Dan Ginchard. Uh, they're now trying to do it again with uh, and Morgan Porter. But yes, uh, so Ultima R, another team, a very, very good team based in Abergelly, North Wales. Min Spearing, half a second in front of Lewis Goff, and that's going to go up because he has just set the fastest lap of the race. Has indeed. A little bit of a, a look there from Charlie Cox, the number 12, up into Christmas Corner. Ooh. On the number 76, down the inside. Loving that move from William Archer, and he makes it stick. Well, so that's Bold on the brakes Paul from, uh, be happy. from uh, William Archer. That should be Archer back up to the top 15. Another yeah. one of the runners with Hunter Motorsport yeah. Paul, this weekend. Paul Offord on the live chat will be very happy with that. He was uh, supporting Will Archer. Uh, so, come on, Will Archer. Well... Will heard you and uh, went for it. Gained him a place. 
Rory Armstrong still down in 17th again, moving up out mini into junior. And now this will, this is where the change in regulation last year to move from Mini Max, which was on the full 1,050 mil chassis, yep. they moved the Mini Max down to the 950 mil chassis. So the drivers moving out of Mini into Junior, by and large, we've just seen Jacob Ashcroft win, it, it's a bigger jump up from them because they've got to deal with the bigger chassis. They have indeed. They've got a lot of uh, dynamics to get the heads around. Uh, but many of our drivers doing that very well here this weekend. Investigation. Uh, notification from race control for the number 37 of Jake uh, Graffiti. Uh, been a difficult race for Graffiti so far here. 15 seconds off the back of the main group. Uh, so that's uh, further not good news for the driver of the number 37. Three retirements from this race, remember? Elliot Surtees, Kenzo Craigie and uh, Zach Green. Well, effectively, it's for the two Argentines that didn't even see the start of this one. New fastest stop of the race for Charlie Cox. As meanwhile, on the attack, Kai Clark in the number 76 down the inside of Albi Lapa for sixth place. The textbook Christmas yes. move. Yes, and, and you know, made it, you know, get up the inside and then, you know, don't allow them to cross over and so, you know, and don't lose too much time because you can make a move into Christmas without losing time. Uh, going to Ashby's, it's much harder to make a move without losing time to the drivers in front. Five but, second uh, penalty for, oh, oh well that's Kai not Clark? so good news for Kai yes. Clark after that great move. Has now got a five second penalty for his troubles, but at least a bit of clear air for him now, Henry, to try and break away. One minute 40 to remaining on the clock, another three laps or so. Let's see how far he can make it up the road. At the moment, Clark would drop down to around, I think, 14th place. And uh, oh, now and now he's in even more trouble because he's been overtaken. And of course, yes, the more it's not about losing positions on the track, it's, just, it's losing time. He's got the number 12 cart of Charlie Cox directly behind him for Coles Racing. Hugh Moulton is there as well, the number 51. And behind Moulton, it's Victor Hansen. Hansen retired from his first race. So, you know, a top 10 here would give him half a chance of uh, making it out of the superheats because we will lose half of the junior drivers at the end of the superheats. We will indeed. All those superheats you'll be able to follow on your platform of choice. Wherever you're watching us from, we'll be back again tomorrow as new fastest lap of the heat. It is Thomas Min Spearing, 46.33 is down the inside there. That's a move from the number 21 of Victor Hansen, getting past Hugh Moulton for ninth place. Moulton having a little think about going back yep. down the inside, uh, but withdraws from that one, particularly as the number 72 of Aris Miauskas, who had that problem early on in this race, right there on his tail. Now, you think about how much rain we've had in the UK, but look already, the Mojo and Vega rubber uh, being used by Micromax is being laid down. One thing there, is that mud on? I think it's actually a little bit the, of abrasion of the carts coming off the, the curb and landing wow. back down. So that's actually like chipping away at the top. Oh, wow. That's, uh, but again, now, coming up the straight here, there's a camera angle from behind the cart. So Owen Neve gets a warning. When you look going, you've got a camera angle going up, just following the carts up the straight towards Christmas Corner. And you can see the different colour of tarmac. It's not different tarmac, mm. but that's the rubber that's been laid down the braking zone. But of course, every time it rains, it washes that rubber, the residual rubber away. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it just shows how quickly the rubber comes back. And that's mostly today. Because yeah, yesterday yeah, just today. we had, it, it, was, it was a day where Daventry's weather could not make its mind up. Okay. It was wet. Not wet, ah. wet, not wet. It would rain for 30 seconds. So, I mean, mechanics I, nightmare. They'll have, they'll have got the step count up yesterday. Uh, uh, well, I have, to, I have to say, so last weekend I was at Glanagh Gorse uh, and Joe Bradley, who's here, will, will be able to ascertain this. We had snow, yes. hail, rain, sun, and cloud. Or as we say that's, in Wales, Saturday. Uh, final lap board is out then. Thomas Mint Spearing on the way to a second race victory of the heats this afternoon. Good defence from the number 21 of Victor Hansen trying to hold on to this ninth place ahead of Moulton and Majowskis. The race leader coming into the final couple of corners now. Hansen doing a great job there. That's normally where drivers succumb to pressure from uh, from behind. Mechanical failure flag for the number 16 of Matteo Palazzo. Oh. Checkered flag is out for Thomas Min Spearing. Takes the win ahead of Lewis Goff. Lewis Blantford changed for fourth place on the last lap there as well as Kasper Tomaleski uh, gets past Charlie Neve. Kai Clark sixth, but remember has that five-second penalty to be applied. Charlie Cox, Albi Lapper and Victor Hansen did 
hold on there for ninth place ahead of Moulton and uh, Mayauskas. They're within five seconds of Kai Clark, so they'll all move up a position once that penalty has been applied. Owen Neve uh, had a, a couple of issues, I think, there in the second half of the race. Finishes a bit further back in 12th ahead of Archer and Palazzo. But for Thomas Minspearing, that is the kind of performance that will please Argenti Motorsports. Two from two. The only driver in Junior Rotax who remains with a perfect zero score uh, at the end of uh, that one. That's four heats down of the five in total. Uh, Lewis Goff will be second in the points now with that second place. Bartle and Smith third and fourth on the four and ten respectively. Uh, Charlie Neve is fifth in the points now on ten, uh, as is uh, Wooden as well. So a three-way tie at the moment there uh, on ten points. Blanford and Lapper completing the top eight. All of that uh, information available to you at home. If you've got a second device, uh, go across to the, uh, the British Car Championships website for... Uh, your access to live tim timing there uh, is a rather, uh, well, it's a Hunter Motorsport number 33 uh, uh, needing some work, Henry. That would be a rearranged, that would be Elliot Surtees. Um, yes, and uh, Elliot Surtees who went out on the opening lap and as you can see, he was not alone. But uh, here's a, a great shot, you know. Oh, oh, hello. Dear. And that cart's a lively one. It hasn't done any laps, so it wants to get off the trolley and, uh, and carry on. It could help from the marshal there. Um, and, of course, you, you know, there's Kenzo Craigie. A big thanks to our marshals, as always. As always, All of our volunteers yes. here at Wilton Mill. Could Most. not go racing without them. Uh, we'll go to, uh, to, well, a few moments. We'll be back with the next race out on circuit. It'll be Senior Rotax taking to the track. Groups A and D coming right up. Let's have a look through the grid oh, then hello. for yes. race number 11, heat three for Senior Rotax. Kai Hunter has pole position. Uh, Lewis Gilbert on the front row as well. Tyler Harris and Joshua Gray in row two. Ben Folland and Morgan Porter on row three. Row four, Caden McQueen and Brandon Klein Nagelvoort. Lucas Elligam and Ewan Charman round out your top ten. Sam Baker and Jamie Perilli are on row number six. In the midfield, Spencer Braum and Alex Moody go from row seven. Ralph Youngling and Ethan Ling on row number eight. John Brown and Ollie Goodyear start on row nine. A trio of CRGs on the same screen. William Pemble and Lucas Schlegel. Benjamin Southgate, Jack Collins, Reese Bailey and Liam Hartley. Continuing the rest of the order with work to do from row 13. Max Taylor and Jugas uh, Pravilanis. Uh, Willoughby Steele and Les Taylor go from row 14. And it's George Hunter completing uh, the field of this one. In fact, no, it's not because Ava Anagnostiadis uh, should also be out in this race, uh, but isn't. Well, or, or is on she? Timing. No, 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 no. I, I thought they just left her off because she had too many letters in her surname. But obviously there's a problem uh, with Ava Agn Agnastiostis. Did I say that right? No. Close. 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 Close with a cigar. The brother is also racing. Yeah, brother, brother James racing for, for Prima Racing. So in that same ah. ladder that we talked about with Argenti and Kenzo, so he's teammates with, with Kenzo Craigie last weekend in the, in the FIA Carton Championships in Valencia. Ah, marvellous. Ah, yes, Valencia. Very good, very good. considerably warmer. Uh, yes, and in, in Anthony Jordan's uh, chat GBT inspired uh, uh, intro clip. Did he mention that the history about the, the river of the Valencia, that the, the reason why there's a river, a, a, a river bed running through the main city of Valencia? Uh, no, he, lots no, of he talk didn't. about the, the La Fires oh, festival well. recently. So I'll, I'll learn him. Right, <laughs> Kai Hunter and the number four of Lewis Gilbert, Tyler Harris. There he is on that uh, black and oh, it just doesn't look the same for MLC Motorsport, but uh, if he keeps it at the front, he's got the pink on the rear bumper. That's how you spot the number 84 of Tyler Harris. Up the uh, hill we go towards Grisco. There's the camera shot. Look at on the outside line. The, it looks slippery. It almost looks like an oil slick. It's not, it's just rubber. Build up of mojo rubber. As a hunter under pressure from Gilbert. And look at that, it's like a multicolored cornucopia of carts. I absolutely love it. Is indeed seven minutes and 30 remaining on the clock. Still very early stages of this one. If you're just joining us, it's Kai Hunter 
three-time senior Rotax O-Plate champion. Three years of the last four. The only driver to break that run is also out there, Lewis Gilbert, the 2021 uh, O-Plate winner. And it's those two at the front of the order, Joshua Graham. Having a quiet weekend so far, but this is his first, mo first one moving into the KR yeah. Sport awning. Uh, we'll be happy with third places down the inside. Gilbert on Hunter through and into the lead. Harris likewise on Joshua Graham. Well, this is an interesting point now. What has Kai Hunter got in response? It's only the heat still, Henry, but that is a good statement from Lewis Gilbert to say, no, you are not going to have everything your own way this weekend, Mr. Hunter. Well, yeah, and, and, and of course, you know, Lewis and Kai, they've raced, I mean, they have raced neck and neck, nose to tail, you know, numerous times. Generally, generally, they got on very well. There's yeah. obviously, you know, when, whenever you race against another driver all over the country and you're very evenly matched, there are going to be times where you have a difference of opinion. And, and I'm, I'm sure these do have, but generally they, 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 are, they, they, they know each other very well. They get on very well. Uh, they trust each other to race properly. And, you know, they, they, so that's, that's the key thing. They know that, okay, Kai Hunter will be thinking now, my main goal is to try and push Lewis away from Tyler and from Ben and from Josh Graham and from Caden McQueen. So why do I have to try and scrap back and forth, battle back and forth? And I've got to say, these teams, they don't miss a trick. No. So you've got the orange little you know, ends of the of the, of the, bump, the rear bumpers for the orange livery uh, sort of Hunter Motorsport car. You've got the blue Motorsport craft livery and you've got the pink for Tyler Harris just, just because. Well, there's, a, there's the new feature, the rear wheel protection. Uh, yep. Newly homologated to uh, AD Fitch. Oh, was off there. That is Willoughby Steel, is oh, it not? Oh, yes, another TKM uh, in convert. The 23 is wrestling down the inside Morgan there. Morgan Porter. Morgan Porter on Brandon Klein Nagelvoort. And I think Lucas, uh, Lucas, Lucas Ellingham's oh. also having a go. That's not good news for Lucas Ellingham, who had problems in race ah. number one. But for right. Morgan Porter, that is the end of the race. Damage to the radiator on the right-hand side of the cart. Ah, oh, what a shame. Uh, we just saw one Hunter Motorsport cart uh, coming back to the paddock with a uh, NASA panel ripped off. And I hope the, well, the Carlos Sites uh, branding uh, manufacturers, they, I hope they brought a lot of NASA panels with them because that is, you know, not a quick fix. Suboptimal. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> uh, four minutes and 40 seconds and counting. Gilbert leads Hunter. 0.3 of a second back. Tyler Ritchie Harris uh, yes, is there well, in you third place. On. The new fastest lap of the race so far. Here they are coming down the uh, back straight towards the entry to the boot. The part of the boot that is unchanged for 2024 in terms of its layout, but very much changed in terms of how the drivers approach it those moves that we would have seen into the into the final bend previously they're going to have to start thinking about getting those last lap moves probably on the toe of the boot now yeah i mean okay we've had we've had one full race weekend and now this one has the circuit change resulted in less or more overtaking i think the question's still out on that one it's uh, it's, it's it's resulted in less high speed crashing which is Undoubtedly, the safety yeah. aspect of it is, is the reason why it was done. Um, but, yeah, as you were saying, in, in, year, in years past, you know, then you would have been had drivers sending them at the inside going into boot two and then trying the undercut coming out of this corner. So in that respect, I think it's probably reduced the amount of overtaking, but it's, you know, they just, they just found somewhere else to crash and do damage. Three minutes and 20 remaining. Kai Hunter took a huge amount of curb through oh, the yeah. final chicane that time around. I think he was pretty much airborne uh, as he went towards the final bend, but still very quick. 45.54, new fastest lap of the race for Caden McQueen. You just see there, uh, he's still in his old YRDA suit, fourth in line, racing for KR Sport this year after seven years with Croc Promotion, and he's down the inside now. How many times over the years have we seen Caden McQueen pull that move? Lovely stuff past Harris for third place. Will now set about trying to catch up to Hunter and Gilbert ahead. Through the final chicane once again, who's improving at the moment. Uh, Ewan Sharman, Sam Baker, Jamie Pirelli, all up two spots so far uh, So far in this race. Spencer Brom is also up two spots. Ethan Ling, another one of the CRGs improving, is up three spots 
to 13th. Move there from the 81, is it not, Ben Folland? This is a good response, a difficult start to the first place oh. for Ben Folland, but he's been on it since then. Yeah, so, so here we go, case in point. KR Sport, MLC Motorsport, Tooley Motorsport. Pick a graphics kit, anyone. I'm going to make myself exceptionally unpopular. But uh, you know, <laughs> so Kate, there's Kate the McQueen. You know. the paddock show later. But yeah, the paddock show later, yes. Everyone will greet me warmly round the neck when I do the paddock show later with you all. But uh, there's McQueen now pulling away from Harris. Uh, and then behind Harris, it's Folland and Graham. This is the battle. The th well, this is now the battle for the race lead. So you can see the tactic. Mm. Hunter didn't tra challenge. He didn't try. Oh, and up the inside goes the number 81. Ben Folland. Good move there for Ben Folland. Down the hill. Now here comes the 88 of Joshua Graham. He makes the move. So Harris has lost a couple of positions. Uh, up into the top 10, Spencer Brawl for the CRG, well, CRG Privateer team. I have seen Nathan Chafer here, who is the importer of the CRG brand in the UK. And he's got three carts out there. They're all in this race. And they're all... Still at this race. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look there. We're, uh, Ethan Ling is up to 13th. Spencer Braum is 10th. And Ollie Goodyear 17th. So all in the top 20 at the moment. Two leaders still working together, trying to make sure that they've got enough of a gap over Cade and McQueen once they get onto the final lap to have a bit of a fight. Because the key in here is this could decide uh, who leads the intermediate classification? Oh. That is uh, Les Taylor coming into the pits in the number 47 Kraft Motorsport machine out of this race. That's going to be uh, an unwanted big score for Les Taylor in the intermediate classification. Uh, it still races to go, of course, Henry, in this one, but it's one of those situations with the points. Gilbert and Hunter right now both started this race with zero, so effectively, whichever one of them oh, finishes yeah. up higher in this race, that will that will yes. decide the battle between those two ahead of the superheats tomorrow. Yes, and that was a very unimpressed looking Morgan Porter uh, spectating from the sidelines, probably waiting to sort of conjuring up what I'm going to say to the driver that I collided with, Mr. Ellingham, when I when I see him in the pits, and uh, trying to choose his words very carefully, bearing in mind there could be a camera and a microphone nearby. Absolutely. Now. The clock has struck zero. Now you can see Lewis Gilbert looking over his shoulder. Oh, and there's the number 23 coming in. Willoughby Steele for the, for the precision racing team. Right, one lap to go. Now Kai Hunter is going to start turning the screw ever so slightly. Whether he'll go full sort of lunge mode. This is only a heat, not a super or a final. However, he will want to take the win. He wants to win as often as, as much as possible. Oh, and there is, ah, you and Charman off at the side of the circuit. And he looked as though he was a bit out of puff there. I wonder if uh, that's cr hit a curve and he's bounced off a tyre and he just winded himself a little bit. Well, you and Charman, it's great to see him back in action this weekend. Uh, had some difficulties in Europe a few weeks ago. Uh, so uh, hopefully he's okay out there. Is there going to be a move here from Kai Hunter? No, not in today. Great positioning from Lewis Gilbert. Just came across to the right a little bit to secure this one. Big curb hop from Hunter around the final corner. Wow. It's going to be Lewis Gilbert who makes it two from two ahead of Kai Hunter. Key victory. Yes, still only in the heats, but a beautiful drive there from the 2021 O-Plate uh, winner. Yeah. That's the kind of thing he's going to need and if he's going to reclaim this title this weekend. And I want to have another look at Kai Hunter over this curb. Let's have a look. He sets the cart up. There's no way he can overtake. Let's just commit. And it's four wheels off. And he catches it wonderfully and hooks the inside wheel on the curve. That's probably the fastest way around that corner. That was beautiful, I have to say. That was full commitment. Land inside right wheel on the curb. Land it in such a position so that it changes the direction of the cart. And he keeps the back end pinned as well. Wonderful. Absolutely mega. Uh, Cader McQueen home in third. Ben Folland, good response there in fourth place. Uh, all good on the front fairing checks for the top three. They'll head into post-race scrutineering, have the, uh, the weights checked, of course. And, uh, well, for, for those two groups, uh, that, of course, being groups A and D, that's them, uh, that's them done for the day. B and C to follow up, of course, 
uh, shortly. Uh, who else gained well in that one? Jamie Pirelli. Good, good to see Jamie back out on circuit. Uh, uh, Henry and up four places in that one to eighth place. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, his, Jamie's dad Simon last year putting up, uh, you know, the uh, the post that every karting father either dreads or can't wait to post. You know, sadly our time in karting has come to an end. Jamie's moving on to different things. Yeah, six months later we're back in the paddock in a wagon, spending money again. Just the most addictive drug there is this sport. Uh, Jack Collins as well, we should give a good shout out to up eight spots uh, in that race to 14th. These are all kinds of performances that uh, giving drivers hope of qualifying through to the top 34. That is the aim uh, for these drivers to get in that final tomorrow. Uh, let's hear from some of them now. Let's head yeah. down Kayden to McQueen. Park Ferme. Uh, Caden McQueen is speaking to Nicole Sutherland. So down here in the pit lane with Caden McQueen, race finished third. Caden, thoughts on the race for you then? Yeah, um, we had the speed uh, at the start. We, we didn't really have a good start, fell back a few places. Uh, we come back through really well. Uh, unfortunately, towards the end, I, was just, uh, I could feel the chain was a bit loose, so I was just trying to be as careful as possible just to bring it home really and finish the race. And in events like that, this, I think a lot of us are, are aware you've got to be consistently there. One slip down the grid can cost you a lot of places so would you say it's tactical to kind of hand back stand back from the leaders and stay out of trouble yeah for sure uh points points are everything especially when you come to a race like this i think there's going to be because it's a one-off race everyone gives it their all they don't think about championship points or anything like that they just want to you know go for it um so to stay out of trouble and make sure you're starting at the front for the final i think that's the most important bit that's great Enjoy the rest of your day, Caden. Thank you. We'll go back up to the comms box for the next senior Rotax race. Thank you very much, Nicole. Indeed. So let's uh, head out onto the circuit. Next drivers out for their next heat are Groups B and C for senior Rotax. That's coming right up. Last of the heats for Senior Rotax, and it's Keen Geraghty who has pole position for it. Jack Lilly alongside on the front row, Matthew Higgins and Super Ted. Teddy Pritchard Williams on row two, Macaulay Bishop and Reg Hayward on row three. Gustav Usakov, Lorenzo Cordal are on row four. Alex Cole, Deacon Russell, Neil Clark, and Guy Cunnington, your top 12. Ethan Martin and Gabe Fairbrother on row seven. Tristan Rennie and Luke Bates on row eight. Sam Longley and Christoph Salas start on row nine. Uh, Rounding at the top 20 of Angus Scrivener and Archie Buttle, then Ramiron Ubi, Stefan Kazmazik, Jack Gillingham, Arthur Thacker. This is Jack's first year in karting, first full year in karting, uh, last year was, sorry. Doing a really good job, Joshua Rudd and Alex Duncan on row 13. Yannick Jacobs and Matthew Lambert go from row 14. Caitlin Seabrook and Gemma Hyans go on the 15th row of the grid. As you say, this is the last heat for Senior Rotax. So the results that we've had so far, plus the one to come, will decide, decide who starts where for the Super Heats tomorrow. Off we go. Eight minutes plus one lap. Good start for Garrity from pole position. Jack Lilly trying to hold in there for P2. Heading up towards Christmas Corner for the first time. Oh, and you can tell wide. straight away, Henry, it's the last heat for all of these drivers. They know what the results have been so far, and it's already getting a little bit feisty out there. So this is either going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be an excellent race with drivers using their heads as we lose one, Arthur Thacker goes for a spin, or it's going to descend into junior Rotax. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, so yeah, there's desperation, but oh, and there's a one strawberry racing driver running wide. But of course, if the drivers use their head, you know, there, there could be some excellent racing here. But of course, if you've had one bad heat, you know, you've got the super heat as well. If you've had one bad heat, do you just consolidate and have faith in your own ability to say, OK, I'm going to have to gain places in the super heat, lots of places to get myself in a final, you know, so I'm just going to see what comes my way, pick up places as and when. Oh, there's the uh, Neil Clark getting uh, moved aside, shall we say. And there's the number 89, because of course, the, the, oh, and there's the problem. I was about to say, oh, and that's not good. The driver's just getting out of the way there. That's, uh, oh, that's Lorenzo Cordal and Deacon Russell, both of whom started in the top 10. There's the problem. If you've had one bad heat and you get desperate, you run the risk of making a mistake, getting involved in an incident, and then you've got two bad heats. Then your goose is cooked. What a camera shot. Hello. There's a photo of John Cleland 
going over the curves at Dingle Dell at Brands Hatch in 1996 in a Vauxhall Cavalier. That is instantly like that. That is karting's version of uh, that's incredible. I'm that, do, I'm we're going to have a slow mo replay of that. <laughs> Um, I've been working with these guys a long time. I don't think I've ever heard a reaction like that from the gallery behind me. But, uh, uh, six there, minutes to well, go there, in There this was one. a few years ago, but that was uh, about something about Daniela Westbrook. I can't go into that. The, 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 can't, can't mention that again. But, yeah, we're going to have a slow motion replay of that. That is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. So... There's a race going on, and Matthew Higgins is in the lead of it. He's got ahead of Jack Lilly. Where has Keen Garrity gone down to? He's gone down to sixth place uh, in this one. So he's still part of that main pack at the front of the order, but the race pace for Keen not quite there so far today. Uh, I think you're absolutely right with, with you, the shapes there on the on the heats. There is a greater waiting for the super heats tomorrow in terms of the yes. IC points. Yes. It's, it's, basically, all the points get times by two. But you don't want to leave yourself with too much to do in those super heats tomorrow just to make the top 34 uh, for Sunday's final. That's a nice move. That's Uzakov's down the inside of Reg Hayward for fifth place. Nicely constructed there in the number 89. Another driver who need this needs to be a good one. But you don't Ooh. want to overdrive too no. much in this second heat. And that was Guy Cunnington not overdriving, but just doing just enough to move into... Uh, S eighth position, sorry, seventh position ahead of Reg Haywood. I feel that with that slow motion replay, I, I feel a really sexy Instagram reel coming on about that. As you've had a change up at the front, Super Ted leads the way. Really good stuff from uh, Teddy Pritchard Williams is into the pits. That was the number 28 retiring, was it not? We'll catch up with that in a moment. Uh, what, one thing we didn't touch on, Henry, uh, in the heat, I think there's another reason why Kai Hunter was probably just holding a little bit, and, bit back in that last race. Yes, he's second in the IC, but that bags in pole position for one of the super heats yes, tomorrow. Yes, yep, yep. So yep. it's that case of if he can win his super heat and Gilbert has a problem, uh, he gets correct. pole for the final. Yes, indeed. So uh, that's, uh, that's a key thing that we should point out. Provisional results, we should stress, though, at this stage. Back at the front, though, in the last heat for senior Rotax, Teddy Pritchard-Williams leads no, yes. by two-tenths of a second ahead of Matthew Higgins. That is a bold one down the inside. That is the 75 of Ethan Martin trying to uh, regain position on Tristan Rennie for P9. Macaulay Bishop joining this battle as well, Henry. Last year's junior O-plate winner in junior Ooh, attacks. Down the inside, lovely stuff from the number 33 of Jack Lilly. I think that surprised uh, yep. Keen Garrity a bit there. He's lost more than one position in all of that. He's down to eight. Just all the dust that come uh, offline there. Now, uh, here we go again. This is, uh, you know, fantastic uh, camera work there. Now, I, again, like all commentators, you know, you don't have favourites. No. And, I, and I don't want to be a, accused of having a favourite. I really want Teddy Pritchard-Williams to win this race. Why? Well, I've known him a long time. And last year at Kim Bolton, uh, running through the top ten, and I was, uh, there, was, there was national, international champions, European champions, grand finals winner, all starting in the top ten, and Higgins has taken the curse the commentator again, only have to talk about Teddy Pritchard-Williams winning, and Matthew Higgins passes him. However, and all I had to say about Teddy Pritchard-Williams at the time was that he supported Aston Villa. Now I can say that he's a British Championship podium finisher, and... I would also say that he is, uh, you know, has, has won a race because you think about this. Who has sat in that strawberry racing seat in the British Championship the last two years? Kimber, Bradshaw, world champions, names. world champions. Now Teddy Pritchard-Williams, who has got the lead back. Now Teddy Pritchard-Williams. This is a season where you can prove, am I just A, a talented but like and likeable underdog who's always there or thereabouts, or am I an actual champion well we spoke to him yesterday in the friday paddock show when we asked him what is it like to drive for strawberry racing his his face absolutely oh. lit up he's delighted for driving for this team this year still got a bit of work to do in this one uh, just under two minutes remaining on the clock there is a mechanical flag you can see there for the number 66 
uh, which I'll leave to you, Henry, uh, to work that out. That would be Jack, Jack Gillingham. Gillingham uh, in oh, 23rd place. he's defending. Is defending it? now is well, Pritchard Williams. That's why the number 66 has got uh, the meatball flag. Uh, um, loose NASA panel on the front of his cart. Oh, Change for second. Okay, yes. Now, McCauley, <laughs> McCauley Bishop, Bishop. Mm. has gone through past his teammate Matthew Higgins. We said at the top of the show, yeah. Kai Hunter moving on very much. Matthew Higgins now the lead driver, you would think, on based on last year. I think McCauley Bishop's got something to say about that. He said, well, yeah. I won everything there is to win in juniors. I'm here now in seniors, and this is what I can do. McCauley Bishop is not one for letting the grass grow under his feet when it comes to overtaking. If he spots an opportunity, he will go for it. Of course, that's worked wonders for him all the way up until seniors. Now he's racing. Don't forget, Matthew Higgins was, well, Teddy Pritchard Williams was driving in senior Rotax the year that uh, Macaulay Bishop won the British Cadet I Army Championship. That same year, Matthew Higgins was winning the junior Rotax British Championship and moving into senior. So Macaulay is now racing, and of course, as you go up to the classes, you generally race against the same kids. If, if a kid moves up a year ahead of you, it's only a year, and then you're back with them. Now, he is racing against drivers that have been in this class five, six years. And even a driver of Macaulay's talent will find it a little bit difficult, more difficult, because you can't just, you know, I'm sure he's going to try coming at the senior, but you cannot always just pull up behind someone and go straight for him, because they will not like that. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, a, this is probably the stiffest learning curve that Bishop has faced. It will uh, be indeed. Matthew Higgins has gone back through there with that move through Christmas Corner. Uh, moving up through the field, Matthew Lambert's having a strong run, has gained 13 places in this one, is up into the top 15. Time has expired. The next time round, they'll see the last lap board. Teddy Pritchard Williams is one lap away from a race victory, a big race victory for Strawberry Racing. He has 0.4 of a second ahead of Higgins and Bishop. The two DHRs have got to work together, and I don't think they can, Henry. Bishop's <laughs> fallen back a bit. Nope from Higgins and it's now all down to last year's runner-up in the Senior Rotax British Kart Championship to see if he can wrestle this way, this win away from his fellow Welshman. Well, let's see. Well, I mean, Teddy Pritchard, he's Welsh as far as the fact that he's got a caravan in Rill. Um, but, you know, this is, it doesn't matter whether it's a heat or not, it's who he's winning against. He's winning at a major event against Higgins and Bishop, against the two Dan Holland carts. This is more significant than just a heat win. It's how he's done it, and it's who he's done it against. He's been overtaken, he's fought back, and as we go to take the check and flag, Teddy Pritchard Williams, he doesn't just support Aston Villa, he is a race winner in the British Old Plate Championship. And that was a joke between me and him. He was like, mate, Henry, I want you to say something about me other than I support Aston Villa. Well, he's got his podium. He's got his podium in the last round of the British Championship last year, and now... He is potentially on course for what would be the biggest, biggest win of his karting career. Absolutely. Really good stuff there from Teddy Pritchard. Williams wins by three tenths of a second from Matthew Higgins. Macaulay Bishop third, Jack Lilly fourth. Gustav uh, Gustav Tuzakov's in fifth place. Keen Geraghty fights back to sixth. Guy Cunnington continues that strong form from last week's club meetings. Finishes P7. Top 10 completed by Rennie, Hayward and Clark. Rest of the uh, order running through your screens there. All the details over on motorsport-timing. And crucially, how does that leave the intermediate classification? That's all four of the senior Rotax heats complete. All drivers have raced twice. The super going into the super heats tomorrow. Remember, these scores are carried over into the super heats tomorrow. Gilbert's on zero. Higgins... Uh, a little bit further back because I've missed out Hunter. So it's Gilbert on zero, Hunter on two, Higgins four, McQueen five. Those will be the front row sitters for the Super Heats tomorrow. Uh, pending, of course, any uh, post-race changes. We should state that at this uh, period. Uh, Geraghty, Lilly, Harris and Graham all tied on nine points, showing once again just how close it is in Senior Rotax. We saw it from the free practices earlier on this morning where we were talking about hundreds of a second between them. That is very much the case, Henry Baudet. Lots to look forward to tomorrow for uh, our oldest, most experienced oh, yes. drivers here this weekend at Wilton Mill. Yes, and, and, you know, 
it's always exciting. Yes, there have been live karting broadcasts from various con various uh, countries, uh, various clubs. But let's have one more look back at coming over that curve. Now, let's slow that down there. They're completely, that's not AI. That's not sort of digital remastering. That's not photoshopping. That is drivers absolutely pushing the limits. And I'm wondering what's going to be the first nose cone penalty when that car lands. Is there going to be a front bumper bracket that breaks? But, but there we go. But, uh, we'll find out about all that later on in the paddock show about what the chassis uh, are saying about that curb. But Cole Sutherland is down with, I'm assuming, a very happy Aston Villa fan, Teddy Pritchard Williams. We're with senior Rotax driver number five, Teddy Pritchard Williams. Teddy, your first race win with new team Strawberry Racing. How's it going for you? Yeah, really good. It's been a bit of an adaptation this weekend, but it's going well. I messed up the first heat, so we we'll keep going from now on. Yeah, and we also saw a bit of a climb uh, up up the standings today, fourth to first yeah. in that one. Bit, bit, scra bit scrappy and then hit second and then a little battle with Matt and then we drove away a little bit, so happy, really happy. And we saw Matt was kind of hot on your heels towards the end. Were you getting a bit nervous or...? Yeah, he's always wondering where they're going to go, so I knew where we was a little bit better and he was a little bit stronger than me, so it was just about managing that. Fantastic. Good luck for the rest of your weekend. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll go back up to the comms box, quick message from the sponsors, and then we'll be back for the next race of the day. Back here at Wilton Mill, getting ready for the next race, race 15, race 13, sorry, on our uh, schedule. It's the A versus B heat for Minimax. The penultimate. The penultimate race of the day. And on pole position, it'll be Finley Lines with Edward Haynes starting alongside on row number one. Luca Holmes Pollock and Albert Friend needs a good result. He goes with grid four. Blair Smith, Stonehouse Smith, and Tom the Farmer Reed on row number four. Three. Elia Velico and Oliver Spencer go from row four. Zach Starbuck and Finley Hines complete the top ten. Max Gilman and Otis Cleary start on row six. Joshua Griffin and Hasnain Khan are next. Jensen Chalk and Alex Goodson are on row number eight. Alfie Ward and Riley Murray. Are next. Row 10 is completed by Daniel Wisniauskas and Leo Livings. Daniel Minto and Blair Smith start on row 11. Uh, that's Privateer Coat Blair Bridge, Smith. Coat, Coat Bridge Smith. Uh, Coat Bridge Smith. Yep. Uh, Jensen Sale and Kieran Stewart on row 12. Adam Churasek, Amrit Atwal, Akili Giannone and the rest are in the tram lines. Lights are not out which is perfectly timed to give us a chance to mention that Ollie Thompson, David Heons, Max Wheatley and Maximilian Braxov are the remaining starters, just to give everybody their due. Uh, let's have a little look. Uh, ah, yes, uh, Hasnain Carr getting... Uh, sorry, Hasnain... Uh, th th there he is. Hasnain Khan. It was Hasnain Khan getting a, little, a, a lot of support on line. Uh, Alfie Ward getting plenty of support as well. Um, well, not many takers uh, for the uh, quest of the day. Who was going to win the final senior road tax race? Well, everyone was obviously too engrossed and no one bothered to answer the live chat. We're, we're also still uh, our suggestions for new names for the new corner. Absolutely none, which, 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 which is disgraceful. Uh, but then again, I said no swearing. Uh, and and, and so, so that could have been... Uh, um, <laughs> Reaction has been... No eligible contenders no, yet. Uh, no eligible contenders yet. Are we going to get a good start this time around? Now, uh, drivers who need a good result in this race. Alby Friend being one of them. After retirement from row number two, Finley Lines can just control the pace from the front. 
Uh, looking at the, it's a false start again. Uh, looking at the intermediate classification, now we've got, uh, that's not quite right, that's, uh, I will not look at the intermediate classification because it's telling me porky pies. There is the green and yellow chevron flag. And uh, held by one of the Orange Army, the most important uh, people in all of racing. And uh, I can understand why Vera decided to put a nice big sponsor logo on that Marshall post. It's almost as though there's someone here to put the product placement in the correct someone's place. planning all this. Almost like someone's planned the whole thing. Here we go. And again, whilst I'm on the topic, thanks to our other sponsors, Demon Tweaks as well. It's a handily placed banner. I wonder who put that there. Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and thanks to Dan Ashton, who's just handily placed there at the side <laughs> of the circuit. And a cameraman, handily placed. That's John Ratcliffe. That is John That's Ratcliffe. John Ratcliffe holding the camera. Oh, right, well, now we know where to send the, uh, the, one, the one junior driver that has got nothing else to race for. Just fire him off into that one. Formation lap being completed then for the last time this afternoon for Minimax. All of these drivers have raced once already. This is their second heat for eight minutes plus one lap. Are we going to be good for green on this one? Yes, we are. Away we go then. Good start for the Synergies on the inside there. Sweep immediately into first and second. Lines from Holmes Ballack up the hill now to Christmas Corner. We've seen action so far with drivers knowing it's their final heats. What are we going to see in this one? Good move round the outside there. That was Max Gilman for Thule Motorsport. Number oh, 69 is very 34. wide there. It's Ilya Veliko who's going to lose position after position after position and stop on driver's left. There's a spin as well for the number 71 of Maxi Braskov. Not the kind of start that Ilya Veliko would have wanted. He's gone all the way from row four to the back. And uh, while well, we watch the action of all great names, because, of course, you've got the boot, and because the curb is so high, as someone said on the live chat, you should call it stiletto. Because you've got the, boot, has, the high heel. Yeah, stiletto, stiletto has, stiletto. Been a, has been a suggestion that yep. I've heard around the, uh, the paddock and the forums in, uh, in the last few weeks. I think it's a, it's a solid one to, uh, okay. to start for 10. Look at that, a synergy one, two, three. And uh, as the number 42 Oliver Spencer moves up, and, uh, you know, imperfect synergy at the front lines, Holmes Ballack and Stonehouse Blair Smith. So good drivers as expected coming through to the four. Who else is gaining through the field? Adam Turacek needs a good race in this one, has gained seven places so far, is up to 18th, uh, up four spots. Uh, all of the following drivers Alfie Ward, 13th, Riley Morrow, 14th, Daniel Minto. 17th oh, as five that's second not penalty. good news five second penalty in race penalty for driver number 15 that's max wheatley well and uh, max who started down at the back of the field he's gained five places he's gone from 30th up to 25th oh and there's a spin in progress and i think well I'm trying to check who that was next time around uh might have been zach Starbuck, I think, or was that it wasn't Finley Hines? Was it? It might have been Finley Hines. We'll have a little look. Not Finley Hines, Finley Hines. And he is Finley Hines, is number 57. Oh, it's clear. Oh, it was, clear. I, I, oh, it was clear. Yes, yep. it was a Jack Dex racing cart that was uh, spinning as just flashed across the screen. Yeah, the red, blue, and white of the Jack Dex racing team. Yeah, Finley Hines, he has gone for the number 57. Hines 57 varieties. That's very mm. smart. Smart. Now, Albie Friend, one, two, he's, he's still down in fifth position, uh, so he's got a little bit of work to do. But again, this is a case of Albie's gonna, he's betting on himself to be good enough to gain enough places in the Super Heat tomorrow to make it into the main event. And, and you've got to remember as well, those finals going, are longer. Yeah, and he, but he's not going all guns blazing. See, mm. he's not diving at the inside every single chance he gets. He's sitting, he's got five minutes, he's thinking, okay, I'm fifth now. You know, looking at that, okay, Finley Lines has gone, but I could, second is possible here if I play it right, if I just sit and play it right. And if I don't get second and I end up finishing fifth, that's still better than going for fourth, ending up having a crash, and 24th, and giving yourself a, a gargantuan task in the Super Heat to even get enough points to get it into the final. Ah, number 13, uh, Amrit Atwal. Uh, unfortunately, they're in cars, they don't give points and prizes out for being a nice person. Amrit Atwal, what a pleasant young man he is, but sadly, he uh, is out of the race. 
Yeah, and uh, out of contention for uh, the good places in this one. Fastest driver out there right now is down the inside. Haynes on Holmes Balak, loving that. Beautiful move into Ashby. One of those that is so... Looks ah, so yellow, easy on wait, screen. Yellow, There's a yellow flag out. I think that is going to be for uh, um, Atwal in the number 13. Ah, yes. He's patiently waiting uh, off to drive as a right. Uh, good, uh, good instructions there from the marshal. Uh, but love that from Edward Haynes. It's one of those that on camera just looks so easy. There's a big wide entry to the corner, but what you don't get is the, the, the drop that you get yeah. into Ashby. So easy to outbreak yep. yourself. And for Haynes, that was absolutely spot on. Is rewarded with second place. So there is uh, Blair Smith in the number eight card. He's now dropped back behind Albert Friend. There's the move from Friend. Now, this is exactly what we were talking about. Friend has now moved to the fourth place. It's taken him 90 seconds since we last spoke about it. He's gained one place. Now he's going to lose it again. But is he defending? Is he coming across in, like, panic and desperation? No, he's not. Because he knows that, you know, one false move from Albi, or any of the drivers around him, and it's curtains. Yeah. So he's just got to be very, very smart here. He moves in front of his teammate, Tom Farmer-Reed, who has got the fast lap of the race so far. And one thing we're going to do tonight, Andrew, is we're going to have a little look at the lap records, because mm -hmm. I'm sure that come tomorrow morning, there will be new lap record holders. And I'm sure that come the end of the day tomorrow, there will be some lap records, should it be dry. Yep. Fingers crossed, touch wood and all that. That uh, we've got some, we'll have some lap records that stay around for some time, such as the competitive nature of this event. Indeed, well, uh, not uh, a best lap last time around for Edward Haynes. He's fallen down to fifth place. So it's Oliver Spencer who's come to the front of this battle for second place, going through uh, these tricky two left-handers. Wilkins, then Oziers. Luke holmes Ballock there, second in line, third overall. Blair Smith having another strong run here. Intermediate classification situation with two and a quarter minutes to go. So this result would give Finlay Lines pole position uh, for one of the super heats tomorrow. Haynes would be second in the IC. holmes Ballock third, Smith, Reed, Spencer, Starbuck and Collinson all inside the top eight. There's a lot to be decided here. Remember, it's two points for finishing second, third. Th uh, three points as here comes Holmes Ballack oh, down the inside. That's ambitious, one. very ambitious, but somehow has worked for Smith and Haynes. Oliver Spencer did very well as Adam Turacek retires. Adam Turacek check out of the race in 30th place. I'm flabbergasted, Henry, at how those three drivers uh, still pointing in the right direction off well. of Christmas Corner. Blair Smith may be from Stonehouse, but he has, I'll say, nerves of steel because that was a brave move. He, there was a whisker between, like, disaster and what we saw, which was everyone getting around clearly, cleanly. Excellent stuff, I've got to say. And uh, it does mean that Finley Lines just romping away to uh, what will be, I am sure, an impressive victory now. Looking back, Albert Friend has dropped to seventh in the number 91 Strawberry Racing cart. And I'm, I'm looking, it's not as though the... Ho oh, is, like, can I see Paul Spencer at the window? Is he going to punch me later on? The whole Strawberry team in Minimax is... They're missing something. They yeah. missed a bit. They're not... Oh, there's Tom Reed. Uh, he, well, they call him the farmer. He was doing a bit of lawn mowing there. Um, but, yeah, and, and sometimes this happens. I'm um, sure Mark Baines will tell us all about it and Nathan Rawlings will tell us all about it later on but however you know such is the competitive nature of this event with so many good teams you miss it by a fraction and you could be nowhere uh, this is why the mechanics the teams this is why they, they, they spend so much time so much money so much effort because they have to they have to be inch perfect every time they hit the track because if they're not inch perfect 10 of the people are and 10 of the people will beat them Absolutely. Five-second penalty for the number five of Joshua Griffin. Tough race for Griffin so far. He's uh, currently 10th place on the road. Edward Haynes trying to hold in there ahead of Blair Smith. This is for third place going into the boot uh, at this moment. Time is up. Spencer looking down the inside oh. of Blair Smith as well. Wrestles his way in there. Gets a position. No, All over the curb is uh, Albie Friend. Is Albie Friend going to have a good run here into turn one? No. Thinks better of it. Just holds off. Finley lines. What a performance. Well, we saw this earlier in the day, didn't we, Henry? Yep. That he won by five seconds. He could be on to do it again here in the final heat of the day for Minimax. 
But the answer, the question of who's going to be second will not be answered until the very last corner. Oh, and there's side by side, up and under. There goes Oliver Spencer. Luca Holmes, Barak and Edward Haynes drove each other very deep into Ashby's. And uh, Oliver Spencer, I'm going to take a, high, a wide line in, cut underneath a pair of you coming out. And Spencer, looking over his shoulder, he should be able to hold on from this point because you can't be going lunging up the inside into this corner anymore because there's this corner right there and that is single file all the way home spencer takes second but spencer takes seconds a long long way behind your race winner finley lines on a bill art for the synergy factory team well of course it's a synergy chassis it's now been homologated as a barrel art uh, Hello to Synergy's own Gary Byatt, by the way. Very happy indeed uh, with that one. Finley Lines then silences the uh, rest of the order. Two wins from two, zero points in the intermediate classification. On top at the end of Saturday, we'll see Minimax uh, kick off the Super Heats tomorrow after a couple more heats for Micromax and Honda Cadet. Uh, but Super Heat A will go from 10.45 on Sunday morning on finals day. Oliver Spencer P2 in that one elevates himself to sixth place in the IC. Third for Luca Holmes Ballack, who can be happy with uh, the day's work, will be in the top three in that IC. Edward Haynes, Blair Smith all in the top five. Starbuck, Friend, Reed, Griffin and Hines all in the top ten on the road. Remember that is before plus five in second uh, in race penalties uh, in terms of the IC the fuller picture of it as mentioned lines on top on uh, zero four points for uh, Haynes so a good run there for Edward Haynes uh, to second place in the standings today Luca Holmes Ballack has mentioned third on five points Blair Smith fourth on eight uh, a tie at the moment for fifth place, which will be uh, separated per procedures in due course, of course, between uh, Reed and Spencer, both on 10. Starbuck seventh on 12, and Collinson, uh, who raced earlier, of course, uh, finishes on 13. Remember, remember, all of those points from the two races for each driver today get carried over into the superheats tomorrow, and it'll be pretty much the same story. Uh, but over a slightly longer race, 10 minutes plus one lap for the superheats tomorrow and double points as well. So, for example, if you finish uh, in P2, as opposed to where you get two points today, you get four tomorrow and so on and so forth. We'll keep you up to date uh, with all of that. One more race to go here today at Wilton Mill. Do very much hope you've uh, enjoyed today's broadcast. Uh, broadcast. And uh, we're going to head down to Park Ferme and uh, have another chat with Nicole Sutherland. So we're with 2023 Micro Max O-Plate champion, Ollie. How's your day been so far? Uh, good. Uh, the first heat wasn't too bad. Uh, we come eighth, had a little incident, and then that one was obviously good. We come second, so yeah. And O-Plate win, do you think you can do it again this year? 100%. Yeah, totally. That's great. Thanks, Ollie. We'll go back up to the comms box now. Thank you very much, Nicole. Getting ready for the final race of the day. It's race 14, heat number five for Junior Rotax. Harrison Whitcomb has pole position. Uh, Jacob Ashcroft alongside on the front row and looking to continue the good form we had earlier. Harry Freeman and Jacob Jukes on row two. We are in my ear hearing we're going to oh, wow. go around again on this one. Yes. Uh, Joshua Turnbull and William Antrobus on row three. Such a shame for Harrison Whittacombe uh, to be out of the... Uh, so I, I don't know if you heard there, but... Uh, ah, so Whittacombe won't yeah, be yes. starting. Crowther, Manji, Woods, West, McDonald and Chandaria. Truman, Baden, Hasty, and the rest. 26 carts, eight minutes plus one lap for the final time today. We're off and racing. We are indeed eight minutes on the board. Also not taking the start. Harrison Crowther and uh, Eli Baden, per the information that we've got here in the box. In fact, no, correct that. I think Baden is in the race. Three wide into, and uh, that's the number 25 of Luca Magni going down the order a bit. Keeps himself in the race, but three oh, wide as round goes the number 19 that in the middle Jack of the park. Collinson. Jack Collinson has that spin. That is not what he would have wanted at all. And uh, that is, uh, it, 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 once again, you can tell 
It's the last heat for the juniors. All of them know what the situations are. It's off the road, way off the road, is Michael Walker in the Jack Dex racing machine. It's frantic out there as drivers are scrabbling for those points and positions on the grid in those super heats tomorrow. Now, of course, I'm not sure if I, I had to pop out of the commentary box uh, uh, momentarily. Um, so I'm not sure if you were able to, to, to explain to the viewers why Harrison Whitcomb is not out there. No, it's right. a new story to us. So, unfortunately, so of course we have Park Ferme tyres. And at the end of the last race, Harrison and all his ear wandered out of the pits pushing his cart with the tyres on. Uh-oh. Realised the error of his way. Turned round, go, oh, shit, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. And uh, uh, words to that effect in Welsh. Uh, and uh, they went, oh, I'm very sorry, but no. Uh, that's it. So, unfortunately, Harrison cannot race on those tyres. He's only got the one set of slick tyres. Remaining. Remaining, so he cannot race with those tyres. If it rains tomorrow, he can go out. If it doesn't, sadly, sadly, and apologies for the somewhat industrial language I used, I was merely reflecting Harrison's uh, reaction on the spot. It was verbatim. Uh, so, but I do apologise if anyone was easily offended, because I know that in karting there's never any bad words ever said. Um, but yes, that is why Harrison Whitcomb sadly is not out there. I'm not sure if Harrison, why Harrison Crowther is not out there either. But uh, yes, so Harrison Whitcomb will be doing a rain dance tonight. Harry Hurst Grover uh, also not in this race at the moment. Five minutes and 45 remaining. Jacob Ashcroft in control at the moment. So this uh, result as it would be right now, still very long way to go in this one, of course, would leave two drivers on zero points. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day for uh, for the IC. Now that is because we've got quite we've got five groups. Yes. And only but everybody races twice, so there is that possibility yes, not of to be a full round robin. Like yeah. you would expect them to do a full round robin, but we're not. So uh, you can have two unbeaten drivers at the end of, yes. end of the Yes, and then the tie break would come down to who had the best timed qualifying effort. Look at this battle, and it almost went terribly wrong. That's the number 27 of Connor Winfield. No, nope, sorry, that's, I'm, look, I'm busy looking at the wrong entry list. I got so excited by uh, apologising for saying my first ever naughty word, apart from when I got electrocuted live on air at Cartmasters one year ago. Uh, no, no, uh, in 2017. Um, there is a clip out there, which I urge you not to look at. Um, but anyway, it was the number 27 of... Uh, I've lost a piece of paper. Joshua Thermal. That's the one you said it a million times, <laughs> Andrew. I, I, uh, new fastest uh, lap of the race. So Noah Barrow, 47.01. Oh, look at that. Where is Barrow at the art. moment? That's just art. Uh, look, at, look at that. The, the hue of the, of the early evening sun. Carts emerging. The dappled sunlight over the top of the crash helmets. And a lunge. Uh, by the number 28 of uh, Brian Truman, and he's going to get lunged back. He's indeed, and uh, loses that position once more. I feel it needs like some Top Gun music play. That's what they do when they, you know, the former ones at Circuit of the Americas at this time of day, don't they? Yeah, uh, yeah, side ooh, by ooh. side, Booth, that's a bold one once again from uh, Joshua Turnbull fighting back ahead of Brandon Truman, the number nine of Leon uh, Hesty coming in. Leon's had a quiet weekend, so this is the first well, time we really talked about him, wasn't yeah, it, the, uh, the was, higher reaches in P6? At the end of his first heat, he was the driver that was, he didn't even want to sit in his go-kart as he came to the, the telephone of doom. He got out of his car and just like pushed it along, which tells me that he wasn't happy with Wagon. Now, he is happier with Wagon, I think it's safe to say. Plus five second penalty, has just come up on our board. On, uh, on the timing for number 26 of Michael Dalton. So uh, that'll be a, a demotion down the order for anyone who finishes within five seconds of the number 26. Jacob Ashcroft, it, it's easy to forget, Henry, that this is his first at, at this level, yes. at Vera Tools British Car Championship level. I know he was here last weekend for, for the club meeting. Yes. His first. Oh, now oh, that is a, a bit of a situation for the number 55 was that Eli Baden. And another car was in there. It might have been the number 65 of Jack Thompson who's cascading yes, down the order. Yes, it was. It was the Hunter Motorsport cart of Thompson. And, and uh, Eli Baden, yeah, the number 55. Now, I couldn't quite see where that I, was. Was that on the entry to the pit lane area? Uh, uh, well, well, I mean, obviously the race is still green. So, it, you know, the uh, going into the boot. Um, somebody, somebody on... The live chat has uh, said about calling it Bevel Bend. No, you should call it the Breville, because if you hit it wrong, you are 
toast. We're here all weekend, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Uh, Thank <laughs> you. My work here is done. Two Jacob minutes Ashcroft. to go. Jacob Ashcroft leading Jacob Dukes by 1.76 seconds. And doing a very good job indeed. Moved down the inside through Christmas. That's Brandon Truman. I assume you've seen Brandon, every time we see Brandon Truman. He's in getting his, his money's He's worth He's overtaking or being oh. overtaken as down the inside goes Jack West there. Uh, Jack Baker's going to take advantage of that and get both of them. I think Noah Barham skipped through as well. Is up to eighth place. Ashby corner looking difficult. Well, that's good to see Eli Baden. Uh, is back in the cart yes, and, and able and to pilot it back under his own steam, but not uh, what he would have wanted. That's going to be P23 for Eli there in the KMS. Well, Ashcroft, he's extending his advantage over Dukes as uh, in the early evening sunshine here on Easter weekend. And it's been a fantastic day of racing. Um, of course, we've got all the super heats, the final tomorrow. For those of you that have been... Uh, triggered on the live chat by the stories and the somewhat you know uh off the cuff remarks you go this is our opportunity we don't normally get this opportunity to give you some of the drivers backstories there are 220 drivers here from all over the world they've all got interesting unique stories families you know teams you know and this is our chance to, to introduce you because you know these drivers they need support they need sponsors they need fan clubs they need people who uh to invest in them, not monetarily, but invest and become fans of theirs. The only way that you become a fan of a driver is if you get to know them and know their story. Tomorrow, it will be all about the racing, as there is a move, the number 22 of Noah Barham picks up a position and passes Shane Chandari, who's doing very well, the Kenyan driver, in eighth place. But the, uh, the addition of an extra days of broadcasting, yes, we can bring you all the action and the race and the interviews and all that, but it does give us a chance to tell you some of the stories that you don't get a chance to tell when you've just got one day of broadcasting and it's all finals. So, uh, yeah, this is the, the, the new plan for this year. You know, Saturdays, heat races, there'll be lots of action, but also a chance for us to, you know, to introduce you, the public, the viewers, to all these wonderful young men and women who are in this sport and in this championship. Absolutely. Uh, there's a technical flag out there. Ah, Unfortunately, it's for the number 65 of Jack Thompson. So that is an early end to the race for the Hunter Motorsport number 65, which I think is already he, headed into yeah, the pits he was, anyway. He was the last cart running. Ah, but that's very good because he was the cart that was underneath Eli Baden. Yes, correct. So we were that's a bit good. worried about where, if he was okay. Yes, he was absolutely fine because he was able to carry on driving his go-kart. The wagon was not as okay. No. And here we go. Have we got a battle? Oh, this is Turnbull and Hasty again. Well, I've got to say, Turnbull and... Uh, yeah, T Turnbull and Truman have got their money's worth uh, <laughs> in this race. They've been all over the place, right in the thick of the action. Oh, there's the number 52 out of the race, Jack Baker for the Evolution Racing Team. It has and, cried enough. And was running in the top 10 as well with oh. Jack Baker. So that is a, a cruel loss of position right at the end of this race. We're on the final lap of the final heat of the day. Two more tomorrow, by the way, just to remind you, Micromax and Honda Cadet will be out first. But there's a good side-by-side -side battle here. Hasty trying to go round the outside through, uh, through Wilkins there. That's never going to work on Joshua Turnbull, but you've got to give him credit for trying. What a day for Jacob Ashcroft stepping up to Junior Rotax and taking two wins from two. Two and a half seconds the advantage for Ashcroft over the rest of the order. William Antrobus finishes P2. Jacob Jukes in P3. Joshua Turnbull wins out in that battle for P4 ahead of Leon Hasty. A great drive from Leon up to uh, fifth place and 15th on the grid. Uh, do you know something? Barry Ashcroft, he is such a great guy. Not only did he say if Jacob Ashcroft took a lap record, he'd give him under a pound. He said if he won both his heat races, he would buy him a brand new crash helmet. What a guy. What a guy indeed. Sixth place for Harry Freeman. Seventh for Noah Barham, eighth for Jack West, Drew, uh, Brando Truman and Luca Magni inside the top uh, ten. Uh, Zach McDonald, who uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from uh, across the course of the season as well, yes. uh, here in the British uh, Kart Championships. He's after both of our job, uh, Henry, there in uh, P11. Bre uh, Benjamin Baker, P12, up 14 spots. What a drive there from, uh, from Benjamin Baker. Yep. Michael Dalton, 13th, also in double figures of uh, positions gained. Top 15 completed by Michael Walker and Kai Veach. 
how does that leave the intermediate classification? That is all the heats, all the eight minute plus one lap heats done for Junior Rotax. We'll see them out uh, at what time? 11.25 for Superheat A, 11.45 for Superheat B. Spearing and Ashcroft, zero apiece. Spearing was quicker in qualifying, qualifying. therefore yeah, qualifying. would take the tiebreaker. Does indeed. Uh, Goff, third on two. Uh, Bartle, fourth on four. Antrobus, fifth on five. Uh, Jukes and Turnbull next up on seven and eight, respectively sixth and seventh. And then Freeman completing the top eight on nine. It's going to be one to watch, still very much all to play for in Junior Rotax. As we mentioned, those two Super Heats will uh, have the scores from today carried over. Super Heats will happen, points from them will be applied, and then it's the top 34 who continue on to the final tomorrow to see uh, who is going to succeed Macaulay Bishop as this year's Rotax, Junior Rotax O-Plate champion. Well, whoever it is, Andrew, will it will be richly deserved in fact whoever whichever five drivers eventually leave this weekend wearing the o plate and of course the o plate means that in that class you can run the zero for the next 12 months they wh whoever wins the, the senior rotax o plate can run it from april the first monday this year until the start of a fifth, well, until the end of next year's O plate, mm. if it's at the same weekend. It's for a full 12 months from O plate to O plate, you get to run that. You're the only driver in the country that can run with the zero on your cart in that class. And breathe. What a day. What a day. It's not over yet either, though, no. is it? Because we've still got, I mean, Nicole Sutherland has been down in the pit lane, but we've still got a paddock show to do. Got a paddock show to do, which uh, we'll be able to see on the on the channels uh, later on. We had a good one yesterday. Uh, I've, I've caused chaos running around. Excellent. There were, there oh. were, there were uh, team members nearly tripping over themselves to try not to get into shot. It was <sighs> it was fantastic fun, and we talked about some Andrew. teams and some drivers as well at the same time. And when it comes to causing chaos, the paddock, watch it. Watch, Watch and learn, learn from later on. <laughs> okay, for the final time today, part of the Paddock Show, Nicole Sutherland is down in the pit lane speaking to some of the contenders from lo that last, that excellent last race. Take it away, Nicole. So, Jacob, two for two for you for this afternoon. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great after two wins. So, um, so obviously, sorry comes in my ear just so two for two great results um like you just said you're feeling great have you been doing anything off of the track to, to get you into that mindset of being really strong yeah i've just been chilling out i've been talking to people of like places where i can improve on the track and i've been doing that and now won both my races that's fantastic. Very best of luck to you for the rest of the weekend, Jacob. So we'll wrap up uh, the racing for this afternoon. Tomorrow, definitely going to be an exciting one. And we'll head up, back up to Andrew and Henry to round off this today's stream. Thank you very much, Nicole. Brilliant work down there yes. uh, on your first day working in the paddock there in, uh, in, a, in a media form uh, for the Vera Tools British Car Championships. Uh, that is it for us here today, Henry. Before we go, before we go and do the paddock Ooh, show as well, right. final, final thoughts? Uh, extremely competitive. The verdict is, I mean, I think that the, the new corner, we've seen less accidents. At, 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 I mean, the accidents we have seen have been at different places at slower speeds. Overtaking-wise, I do think it makes overtaking harder. Mm -hmm. That simply means that the drivers and the teams have to then adjust their tactics and maybe even adjust a setup. And instead of that last complex being a key area they set the cart up for, they're going to have to look at other areas now to refigure out the way to drive this circuit. You've only changed one corner, but the impact that that has means that you have to reset your thinking of the whole way around this circuit. Uh, I think a couple of drivers looking like they got a little bit of ring rust you know and i'm sure that uh, that, that things will smooth out you know it's say smooth out you know smooth themselves out uh, as as the as the weekend progresses but overall 220 drivers 202 in the four rotax classes that's excellent uh, mm -hmm. and good to see honda cadet growing compared to last year and there are lots of hondas out there because i was with a full grid of them last weekend so uh, the future is bright about as bright as that sunset which is lovely absolutely we're back tomorrow for finals day and uh, it all kicks off just after 10 o'clock here 
uh, for your live broadcast. So we'll have two more of the heats. Micromax and Honda Cadets have their second eight minute plus one lap heat. Uh, it's going from 10.15 for Micromax, 10.30 for Honda Cadet. Don't forget, clocks go uh, forward tonight. So yeah. that's on British Summertime, uh, those timings. And then we kick into the superheats uh, for all of our classes from 10.45. Finals go from 2 o'clock here. The top 34 uh, in all five categories will race in them for 12 minutes plus one lap to decide who will be the champions at this, the 2024 British Open championship thank you very much for being with us myself andrew mather and henry Bodet alongside me have a lovely evening and we'll see you bright and early here from wilton mill tomorrow morning for the heats and superheats bye bye